So, Heartbreak Remedy, thanks for joining us. Hello. You're, you're a man down, but we'll carry on. Yeah. He's the least talkative, is he? Busy working. Oh, okay, fair enough. <laughs> Probably. So you get the hard bargain, eh? Yeah, yeah. So you've got your new album, Memento Mori. Yep. Which is out now. It is. What does Memento Mori mean? After death, isn't it? Remember to die. That's it. Remember to die. But that means you've got to remember to live before you can remember to die. That's how I see it. It's so who came up with that? Luke. Luke. <laughs> <laughs> the one who's not here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get him yeah. on the phone. Do you know how, do you know how, we, how we came up with it? Or? To be honest, he, he, he sort of does, does things with like that. He, yeah. Anything can you tilt your mic just a little bit further so it's facing the top of it's facing towards your mouth? Ooh. That's how microphones work. I broke it. Just switch it around, it'll be fine. Broke it. Okay. That's it, yeah, go right around with it once, by the way. That's it. And then I'll I snapped it up. No, we're good. There we go. We're good. It smells good. There we <laughs> are. Winner. Oh, text on the move. <sighs> See, we're sorted. Yeah. Sorted. I know exactly how to use a mic. <laughs> you do. <laughs> There you go. Hey, so, do you know where he got it from? Um, he's into a lot of voodoo stuff, isn't he? New Orleans and all. You got married out there, so. Oh, of course he did. He's yeah. into all that sort of. So was this in like a list of possible other t- album titles? Yeah, it was one of them where we probably got to January, didn't it? And we went, yeah. we need a title. <laughs> and, it, and it was just one of them where, you know, group chats and it was just. Oh, so there isn't, there is not a song called that on there? No. Yeah. We try and keep away from that. Because when it goes for reviews and everybody, everything, everybody goes, oh, well, that's the name of the album, so that must be the main track. Mm. Well, it's not necessarily, no. That's yeah. cool. So who did the artwork? Uh, originally, it started off with Luke again. Right. He'd done all it's the art. quite al- talented, isn't he? He should have been here. He should have been here. He sort of starts off with designs, and then I pass them on to my girlfriend, Emma, who then... It went to Natalie, didn't it? Natalie Morgett, who's yeah. a tattoo artist who we know. Mm-hmm. Um, and she'd done the main of the artwork and then Emma sort of finished it off and put the colour in that we wanted and everything. And it's really cool. Yeah, but then Emma finished everything off. She'd done, she done all the artwork, to be honest. Yeah. It's cool. If t- the, the woman, it's very detailed. It is quite <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Depends how far you zoom in. Because <laughs> <laughs> normally they just miss that bit out. Yeah. Like mannequins and that. But Luke drew it, so. <laughs> <laughs> so he got his own way. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I think I think the words were we need more definition yeah. on the arse. That was exactly <laughs> that was a perfect message from Luke. That's cool. Yeah. So ha- where and how was it recorded? Recorded up at Tom Tyson's studio in Egremont. All right. Um, cool. I've so had a brief listen to it just before on Spotify. It started it was really good. I think it was last April we went up the yeah. first time. So it's been. So I've got the last couple of things that you've done, and this yeah. is definitely production-wise, yeah. definitely the yeah. best sound, especially the drums. Perfect. Because quite often the matter. drums can be, because yeah. some people, some bands can't afford to get yeah. the whole everything yeah. done properly, so they have to yeah. outsource the drums and it, or yeah. use digital drums, and it just doesn't sound yeah. the same. But it sounds really I good. I like Tom. Tom knows what he's doing. He's, he gets a good drum sound as well. So. Because for some bands, it must be a bit frustrating for the drummer as well. Yeah. It's like the guitars sound yeah. awesome, the vocals sound awesome, but the drums are a bit... <laughs> yeah. To be honest, it, we, we took a lot more mm. time with that, mm. especially with it being our first release as a three-piece. Mm. We uh, yeah, That's true. We basically just turned around to each other and we went, right, let's treat it as if it's the last record that we'll yeah. record. Let's yeah. treat it, you know. So we just sort of went, right, we'll <coughs> go in took the first lot of recordings away and Luke listened and he went, right, I don't like this. Or I turned around and went, I don't want that bass line, you know, whatever. And I think you were away again. I was <laughs> away. We'll get to that. Yeah, we'll and um, and it was one of them where me and Luke went, right, let's try this, let's try that. And we spent another day in the studio, just guitars, bass, vocals, and swapping stuff around. And we even done... Uh, country boy and didn't tell Steve. Yeah, I got back and they were like, have a listen to this, see what you think. Put it on the cars <laughs> driving along. This song started, I'm like, what the hell is this song? <laughs> so if you have got quite a lot of freedom in the studio to go in and try stuff. It's not a case stuff because whenever we've been on it, it's like, you've paid for it, you've got this amount of time, you either do or you don't. Um, well, it was a bit more we, relaxed for you. Yeah, well, I think you and Luke got together quite a few times and just kind of yeah. acoustic guitars and just kind of fiddled around. And <clears> so you know the guy who... So 
in quite well who has the studio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We'd done yeah. the first EP with Tom. Ah, right, cool. And then... So uh, was, it, well, was it mastered there? Did he master, or did he master it somewhere else? No. Pete Mayer from London. Ah, right, cool. He's done quite a lot. He did so it definitely had like a professional yeah, edge yeah, yeah. to it. Yeah. It's really cool. So you so must yeah. be proud of it then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, happiest I've ever been with a record. Yeah. It Sounds came out on really Valentine's good. Day. Yeah. Yeah. Had to be done, didn't it? <laughs> Happy, Why not? <laughs> But Best you have, so days. you didn't actually have an album launch, but you've got, have you got a hometown gig? Well, we've got the Whitehaven gig, haven't we? 17th of March, yeah, playing Whitehaven. So Where at? Uh, three tons. Ah, okay. So, yep. just us. So, we just have... An evening with Heartbreak Remedy. Have, yeah. <laughs> Candles. Yeah. So, have you got many more dates to like, plan to take it with you? Yeah, we're places? playing the 16th of March with um, Voodoo Blood and Bannermans in Edinburgh. Ah, great and venue. And then we've got, we've got three tons gig the night after... Did you see what happened to Vanamans recently? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I can't that, believe yeah. that. We were talking to Christian yeah, a couple of days it. later, and he, he he just sort of laughed about it. But I just couldn't believe it. Ridiculous. Isn't they it? got named in shame, though. So yeah, yeah. Big star. I think the page disappeared. <laughs> it did straight away. But Cause I, the coverage it, you got. It came late, what, late the night before some, you put it up. Yeah. And then I checked their page, and by the morning it was gone. gone. Yeah. I saw a few comments before people were just lambasting yeah. this band. Yeah. Like, like very budget but twats. The <laughs> thing is, they deserve it though. Oh, it's absolutely. Like they'll never, they'll no. never work thing again, is, I don't think. That's probably one of the, the best venues to play at. You get free accommodation, Definitely. they'll look after you all yeah, night. The sound guys are always good, and it's just. I can't. <laughs> why you do that? I have no idea. Because too many autobiographies and. They mm. were boasting about it as well. Yeah. Yeah. Someone, someone said that they'd seen. They were boasting about it on well, been Instagram or something. Snapchat videos yeah. and everything like that. Somebody had passed it on. So I don't know. So what other shows have you got coming up then? Uh, we're in Blackpool, aren't we? Yeah. With uh, Stevie, Stevie Pierce. We said that in unison. I like yeah. it. Yeah, stereo. Yeah. Welcome to speech stereo. Yeah. Stevie, Stevie Pierce. <laughs> Stevie <laughs> <laughs> so what's where you play? Where's the venue? Are you playing? We're playing. Which is what? Waterloo. Waterloo, Waterloo first in Blackpool. And then parish the parish and parish Huddersfield. They'll be so good gigs. Yeah. Never been at the parish, but no. So if how would you, if someone hadn't heard you guys before, how would you describe what like what genre? <laughs> what genre, or just generally, how would you describe the band? We had this discussion the other day, and we struggled. I'm not saying they should be. Some yeah, some no, bands yeah. can't, but no, we we've, we've struggled especially with this one because it's very all over the place. We don't we don't sit and try and stick to a formula. It's no. like Luke will write a song. And then I'll maybe write one, and then you just sort of see what happens. <coughs> yeah. And however it turns out is the way it turns out. You don't. It's so usually let like other people decide. What What's the like in your reviews and stuff? What 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 commonly do you get called? Genres you do, or who do you get compared to? Black uh, Crows yeah, yeah, came up yeah, quite a yeah. bit. But uh, it's a good mix because like our music's kind of, it's got the rock, it's got the the punk, yeah, it's got like the blues. But then a bit of country as well, just yeah. thrown in, just to kind of, just to make things difficult to compare us. But where did the name Hyper Remedy come from? Ah, oh, that was me. <laughs> I think Callum was on here last year, and he yeah. might have mentioned. Yeah. I, can't, yeah. I can't remember. I don't. Th- did it, I can't remember if he actually knew. I can't remember if he knew. It was that long ago? It was a long time, long ago. Long time yeah, ago. he. I think he mentioned somewhere about it. I don't remember him saying about it, but uh, yeah, I. I sort of had a few songs which were on the first EP of ours. Um, and I sort of had them and wanted to hear it as a band. It was never meant to go recorded. It right. was never meant to go to go out and play. I just wanted to see what these songs would sound like in a band. Yeah. Um, and then the band name was just one of them where, you know, I'd split up from my girlfriend. And <laughs> it is I that need a heartbreak remedy. It is, it is that <laughs> cliche. I, I, was, I was bored. Yeah, you know, I, all it was was pure boredom because I'd gone from you know you spend all your time with. But you didn't, uh, when you came up with it, it wasn't intended as the name of a band, though, was it? Well, uh, we didn't have a, or was it a song a name, and it was just kind of like it, it was, was just like known a, as the project, yeah. wasn't it? But so you had a song kind of kind of called that, do you think? No, it was oh, just right. it was just one of them. You know where you sit on Facebook and you're typing in names, yeah. You're trying to up. see what's free. You don't want some of that. Like there's a million other bands called that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So like Dynamo. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So I came up with Heartbreak Remedy and typed that in. Nothing came up, and I was like, "That's half the battle, isn't it? Because if somebody else can't find you, they're not going to. They're going to yeah, give up, exactly, aren't they? Yeah. If you're not in yeah. the first sort of page or two, they're yeah. just going to yeah. go forget yeah. it." 
So we were on the winner then, weren't we? It's Matty's remedy for heartbreak, so <laughs> that's literally where it came from. But so well, has the um, logo changed much since day one? Uh, yeah. Yeah, a couple of times, yeah. To be honest, each CD, we, we change it. Um, but we've had two new logos in space of... Last Is that because last... you wanted to, or do you think you haven't found the logo? Like, sometimes some bands consider their logo their brand. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't think, think we've just it tried is. to mix it up with the artwork yeah. and just yeah. kind of like you just adapt the logo to the yeah, artwork just find yeah. something oh, new cool. sort of thing it's more like um, the t-shirt designs and things like that I mean that's yeah. the one that's been used the most yeah um, but yeah we sort of do a t-shirt design and normally if there's a poster that needs to go out what we'll do is we'll send them a couple of different choices of artwork yeah. and then because whatever fits their poster yeah. or something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's yeah. always a good idea. So what, what year did Heart Remember Me fa- start? You two are founding members, aren't you? Yeah. 2013. Yeah. I think. Oh, it was. Yeah. 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 We're getting old now. Yeah. What was the original lineup? Us three and Callum. Thought so. Yeah. So, so it hasn't changed much, no. has it? Yeah. No. That's We've a good thing. So four years now into your fourth year. Is it? Oh, fifth year? Fifth year. Yeah. Fifth, yeah. yeah. So first gig was the fourth of May, I think. Yeah, it was Bank Holiday Weekend. Was it a hometown was, uh, gig? No, it was Trillions in Newcastle. With <laughs> That's enough, a good first enough, gig. With Enough's Enough. So <laughs> oh, with Enough's Enough? Yeah. 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 Oh, that was a busy one as well. It was a good yeah. night. It was a good night. Yeah, and right. strangely, Steve Pierce was playing with Young Us. Oh, yeah. Because so. <laughs> obviously you were in Falling Red before yeah, that. Yeah. How, were you in the, the beginning of Falling Red? No, I I joined after Millsy. Millsy. I, I, was, meant, him. I was meant to fill in for Millsy for the show so he wasn't able to do right so Millsy was still meant to be part of the band and I was just gonna rock up and do a couple of shows whatever he couldn't do and then all yeah. of a sudden it was uh it's gone from part-time to a full-time <laughs> position do you fancy it and I was like oh yeah stuff it <laughs> so that was fun yeah yeah good good 12 month I think it was drunk in 12 you were only in 12 months yeah yeah <laughs> see I can only remember I Remember, think of you. I don't think of Millsy really. I can't. Yeah, I can't really. It is one of them where people class that as the original lineup. Yeah. I suppose. Did they have what was their first album when you were in the band though? I joined just after they'd released ah, it. Ah, right, right. That's probably why then, because as soon as their first album came out, then you were pretty much the bass player, weren't you? Pretty much. So that's what people will remember. They done the. They went and done the Sebastian Bach shows, didn't they? And, yeah. Uh, that was where I went and seen them. I, ah, right, I yeah. remember going and watching them as Dark Art Boys. Right. And uh, we played with them in yeah. working, didn't we, with Evan's, Evan's Basement? Basement. Yeah, so, went uh, to right. that show. So, so you played with Falling Red in another band? With Falling Red, uh, yeah. yeah. No, yeah, we supported with, with our other band, Airwall. Ah, right. Oh, Airwall, yeah. Covers band, so. I've seen them a few times, they're good. Yeah. Yeah. Is it Dean? Dean, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's a fucking good guitar player, isn't he? <laughs> Unreal, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> he is. Yeah. I remember we played it, we played together at the warehouse. I think yeah. It was a oh, yeah, Halloween yeah. show, rock yeah, show. It was, yeah, yeah. And they, you guys were opening, I think. Filled and did some minute, covers yeah. and that. Yeah. And he did. I can't remember what song it was. I was like, who's that guy? Yeah. <laughs> I'd never, I'd never met him before. Yeah. Well, he's good. <laughs> it was a last minute thing, wasn't it? Somebody had pulled out. Yeah, I think um, it was. Yeah. Well, because Heartbreak Remedy were playing anyway, wasn't we it? So he said, anyway, oh, yeah. we might yeah. as well open. Yeah. We just phoned Dean, and Dean was like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> so just came through. He eats, sleeps, and breathes guitar, doesn't he? Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> Non-stop. Yeah. It's good. It's great but to see. But, um, so, have you got, like, plans for, like, later in the year? Have you thought that far ahead? Um, have you got any festivals in the bag? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've got, we've got a few. A few that hasn't been announced yet, and yeah, cool. things like that. So, the, there is things in the pipeline that, you know, you can't announce. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I must admit, things are getting sort of yeah. harder on the scene these days. Mm. Um, we, we were sort of discussing it that a couple of years ago when we came out as a three-piece, like last year we had a pretty quiet year because we were doing the record and everything like that. Mm. Um, we still managed to fit quite a lot of gigs yeah. in there. There's still quite a lot coming through. So. But it, it, it's sort of gone from being where you would message another band and say, oh, you know, is there any chance of the support or mm. whatever, to now it's... The bands will say yes, and then you're going to message a couple of days later, and it's oh the promoter wants somebody else, and it's getting to the point now where the promoters get more say than what the bands are of who plays with, right. who plays on the yeah. show, and it, it's sort of one of them where it's harder for us because we've been sort of quiet, yeah, 
to try and now you want to come back and build it back do up, a yeah. do a yeah. yeah and you try to nudge your way in and you've got promoters going well we don't know who you are yeah but you got they've got to give you a chance haven't they well, that's <laughs> it so it's, a, it's a big swings and roundabouts and yeah it's like like bannermans obviously you played there i'm sure when you were up yeah. band or yeah, way down yeah. when you first played there but now yeah. you go back and they treat you well don't they yeah, <laughs> yeah. But that's how it works yeah. yeah but so obviously as the year goes on I'm just, things things crop up don't they well, invites it. come from nowhere yeah, and exactly. you just, it yeah. just it yeah. all works out so did you say you're doing a video as well we've just got the uh the lyric video out for octane it's on the ah, new okay. record we'll, um, put, we'll put a link in the show yeah. notes and then um <coughs> Yeah, I think I've got a meeting on Sunday. Yeah, with a company, um, and that's for the next single. Cool, because they're, they're just promotional tools, really. Yeah, aren't yeah. They? Exactly. that's all they are these yeah. days. Yeah. It's just like being on Spotify. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't pay, but you need yeah, to be exactly. there. Yeah, because that's how young. Yeah. That's how young. That's how people uh, see it. The young ones these days. Yeah, know, that's how yeah. they find you. How we're old, we can say that. <laughs> but to be fair, I think the longer you're on there, the more music you've got got on there, you then start getting compared to the bigger artists yeah. of your genre. So sometimes yeah. you'll get re- recommended to people. Which yeah. Yeah. At the end of the day, all you're doing is trying to get people to come to you live. Exactly. Yeah. That's, that's it. where the money's at these days, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Back in the day when it used to be the tour to support the album, I've said this before, it's now the album to support the tour, isn't it? Yeah. It's just like, exactly. You've got to spend money doing an album just so you can go on tour and have something to for them to come yeah. and see. Yeah, well, that's it. You've, you've got to have something to sell now. Yeah. But in a way, it does make bands better, I think, because you've got to be good live. You can't. The, you can have the best CD in the world, but if they come to you live and you're like, you, you're okay, or what you've done on the, in the studio doesn't match up to what you can't yeah. do it live, mm-hmm. it's kind of well, we just get exposed. Don't talking you? about it on the way through. There was a there was a festival I went to last year. I'm not going to mention it because was it in this country? It was okay, and it was a discussion over the weekend, um, and everyone was there were so many bands using backing tracks, yeah, it's and rife. the backing tracks went wrong on most mm-hmm. bands. And every band struggled, mm. and it was. It's like there's a lot play more live. Than you'd think it these is, days. It, yeah. yeah. And you sometimes you're surprised, but oh, I didn't think they'd be using the backing track. Yeah. yeah. And for me, if there's a problem with the backing track, and there's a problem. If there's, if there's a problem with the backing track, there's yeah. a problem with the band. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and if, if you can't play live, and everyone, do everyone just kind of it's screwed up because the backing track was skipping and everything like that, and it was. Yeah. But. It's like that famous clip. F- oh, you know those like it'll be alright in the night program yeah. for the show. It was a uh, that song. You're my favorite waste of time. That band was on like GMTV or something. Right. And they was like they cut to them, but obviously hadn't told the band, so the band was just sat there with their arms <laughs> the, the music's playing. And they're all there going, "Why are all the cameras moving towards us? Yeah. <laughs> Why is that red light coming?" <laughs> but it's getting it's getting more and more. Yeah. It is, yeah. Sometimes yeah. like fairly big bands, and you just think, really? Well, we we saw Shine Down the other year. And I've seen Shine Down oh a few yeah. times, and they were they were great. Yeah. And I don't think they used many to start with, but that last time on the um, Carnival, of Carnival of Madness tour, it was, it was so much back and track, and yeah. it, it just kind of killed it because it didn't feel as as real. Yeah, I know it just felt felt yeah. like they were up on stage, just kind of like playing away and letting the back and track do. Well, most do of the, the work, work and yeah, it, I don't it's, get that. it's disappointing especially That's when there's back and vocal like, like, like lead yeah, vocals that, 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 like, there's no one there to sing it yeah. so they've got it yeah. it's, and it's, it's not really value for money that I don't think is it it just doesn't feel kind of the van kind of goes down a bit in yeah, your estimation you just yeah. don't feel like it's them anymore Yeah, it, anybody can play a back and track and then play along to it Happens to a lot of bands. It does, I yeah. don't know. Yeah. I don't know what, people see why people seem rather than go and have singing lessons. Well, I think I think where it is is because everyone now, as soon as you go to a gig, the cameras are up and the the filming it, yeah, and it goes straight online. And if it sounds bad, everyone's like, "Well, I'm not going to buy tickets to go and see them." Yeah. And so I think it's because so many people film it, people don't want to sound bad. Yeah. On a video, it, should it goes. Sh- it should be more like worldwide. I should be. I should practice more. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, have you heard about this thing about them? Some artists, that company where you put your phone in a bag. Yeah. Well, have you heard of this? Chris Rock did it, didn't he? Yeah. Some comedy, bands have started like? to do it. Uh, where it's like this. I don't know how the technology works, but you put your phone in a bag, and if you're inside the venue, the bag bag's locked. Locked. Yeah. You have to agree to it, obviously. Mm, otherwise, yeah. but they, they say it, they like the show. This show, this is happening. This show. So if you don't agree you to don't it, agree can't agree come. Can't come in. Yeah. So. Yeah your phone's locked you can't use it if you want to go out as soon as you go out, out the venue or outside the the foyer door it opens right so strange i'd like to try it yeah. just to see if what the atmosphere would be like at a gig when you use no cameras yeah. or anything like that yeah because 
I'm old enough to remember when that used to be the case. Yeah. <laughs> You'd have someone yeah. with like a, a disposable camera. Yeah. yeah. But now you No get... idea what the taking I, photos I can are. remember taking a disposable download. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You find yourself, though, sometimes if somebody in front of you is filming, you, you like Watch spend your time watching their screen and you're like, <laughs> yeah. I wonder what they're filming. I always say, why don't the bands just pay for a shitty camera on the side of the road and film the whole thing? Yeah. So they will give it to you at the end. Just put your phone exactly. away. Yeah. Well, there was a few bands that did it where they like, recorded the shows and then they give it in a like a download drive, yeah. or, or on a pen drive at the yeah. end of the gig. Well, that, that's quite a cool idea. Well, you get the other side of the argument where people say, well, people paid their money, they should be able to do what they want. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. you can't win either way. Yeah. But yeah. some some I've seen some bands where they've like thrown water on someone's... I think Corey Taylor did it. Uh, threw yeah. water on someone's phone. Oh, took their phone off them. So I'll give it to you at the end of the show. <laughs> Justin did that from the darkness. How did he? Saw him. Where was that? And this guy was like creating a bit of a fuss down the front. And he was just like, he's like, and he started giving him a little bit of abuse from the stage. And he was just like, sorry, mate, like a couple of songs. He's like, sorry, mate. He's like, what I'll do is I'll, I'll take your phone and I'll take a few photos and I'll give you it back. And so he, this guy passed his phone up. He put it down his pants, started rubbing it around, <laughs> round to his ass, and just went, I'm going to put it on the back there by the drums. He said, and if you play it nice, he said, you can get it back in a little bit. <laughs> and he, he put it on there, and like half an hour later, he was just like, do you want your phone back? Have you been, have you been behaving? And he was just like, <laughs> like, there you go. But he sniffed it before, and he went, Ooh, he goes, he said, it smells like balls. He goes, I can't decide whether it smelled like balls before or afterwards. He's like, but there's your phone. Have a nice night. And it was just so funny. Like, he's, he's a great, like, front man. And yeah, yeah. Performer, so, but yeah, that was quite funny. Because some funny. people spend their whole show doing that. Yeah. Mm. And you just think, but are they actually not taking in what they're... Yeah, exactly, is it more yeah. important that yeah. they show it to other people or watch yeah. it themselves? And especially the bigger gigs where you pay like 50, 60, 70 quid. Yeah. And you just think, why? I do it sometimes. But I like, do it at the beginning I'll, of the show. I'll hold it above my head so I can still see. Yeah. I'm probably blocking everybody else behind <laughs> me. Yeah. But I, I'm still watching the show. So when I get the video afterwards, I'm like this. Yeah. I usually <laughs> do it at the beginning. I take a couple of photos in a video. Yeah. Because uh, normally when bands come out, that's when all the lights go in and yeah, like, you exactly, get the best yeah. and all the camera, all the professional photographers are running around. Yeah. So I'll take one then, then I'll just put my phone away. Yeah, just enjoy but it. I suppose everyone does have a right to do what they want, I guess. But it, when the people have got massive iPads, yeah, <laughs> they're going like well, that's this. happening more and more now, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> the iPads are getting ridiculous now, and it's like, come on. <laughs> yep. Oh, many, I suppose it's the same problems as you had back in the day when someone tall was in front of you. I get that quite a lot. Yeah. I always find the tall people are stood in front of me. Which is bad. Well, it's not all of you. Yeah, no, yeah, that's the thing. It's like I, I always be a somehow. Height rule. If you're over this height, get to the back. <laughs> that annoys me though. When people say, "Can I stand in front of you?" I'm like, if everyone asked me that, you'd be at the back. I'd be at the back. <laughs> and because I arrived like three hours before you did, surely it's like only right that I get to stand here. But you're gonna say something, Tech? Yeah. How many people actually watch these videos back after they recorded them? Like, Probably only the person who took it <laughs> 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 to go. I can't see it. I can't hear it. <laughs> it doesn't make any how sense. How was the gig? Oh, it was great. Watch this video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sounds brilliant. I think I'll go and see him next time. <laughs> which, which pixel is the artist? <laughs> it just doesn't you make any sense. But yeah, some bands do professionally record their show, and like you have to sometimes like three quid or something. Yeah. But might as well do that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Oh, so before I forget, so in the end. <laughs> In the end, why did what made you decide to leave Falling Red? Uh, <laughs> I was like, where were we going to go? <laughs> I was not sure where we were. Uh, in the end, it doesn't get, even matter. You get matter. people are listening. Like, if you start talking about something, you go off on a tangent. You don't go back and finish off what yeah. you're talking about. They lose their shit, so we better go back. Yeah. It was all work and money. Usual thing, isn't it? Because it, 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 it it's a band at that level. It's quite a commitment, it, isn't it? It starts it, to get more and more. It got to the point in November where we sat down and it was like, there's a... Two week two will come up in March. Um, then you might be going to do this, f and that's going to take a couple of weeks. And I just sat there and I went, I've now lost all my wages and all my holidays before even April's turned yeah. up for the year. Yeah. And I'm like, can I do another year of being the odd day down in wages? Mm. And yeah. And it was it was all that sort of bits, and then. Even my boss turned around at one point and he just went, listen, I'm not saying now, but at some point I'm going to ask you to decide. One or the other. You're going to have to do one or the other. Because, I mean, I was I was <coughs> phoning him up. I can remember when we done Hard Rock Hell for the first time. Um, I phoned him up and I went, oh, I've had a bad Chinese, I won't be in, you know. You know, as you do, <laughs> eh? And 
in Wales. <laughs> we went, we flew down to Tardokel, and it was in Prestatin at the time. Me and Shane went down, and Shane couldn't get the next day off either, and I couldn't afford to have the next day off. So we went down and we played. We were one of the first bands on. Went down, played, packed our gear in the car, and straight back up. And I went to work the next day, and I stood up, still had my eyeliner on. And I didn't <laughs> realise. And uh, <laughs> my boss turned around and he went, did you have a rough day yesterday? Was, was really badly, I went, yeah, yeah. So, As a builder, so, it's, not, yeah, yeah, it's, not, <laughs> yeah. it's not your usual get yeah. up really, is it? And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and I'm, like I'm so sorry. I'm, 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 you know, <laughs> guy next to us who, who was laying bricks next to us, he nudged us and he went, you do realise you've still got your eyeliner on? I'm like, yeah. I went, <sighs> that's pretty much yeah. me in trouble. But uh, he, he never really mentioned it. Luckily, my boss was... He was really good about everything. I mean, we went out on the Star Rats tour and uh, I think that we announced that and I got that time off and then Raz come back and he went, oh, he says, I've got your four dates in Belgium, I think it was. Yeah. Um, so I then had to go to the boss's house, sweet talking for another <laughs> five days off or whatever. Got a bad Chinese yeah. coming. <laughs> 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 and yeah, it was... It was it's getting happening more and more. Yeah, he, I mean, he was great about it, but, you know, you can sort of understand it at the same time. There's only time. so much yeah. you can do in there. But so I, it's a lot, it's a lot of musicians, when a band gets to a certain point, it's hard to find a boss or a job where you yeah. can be that flexible yeah. as well, isn't it? Mm. Especially, if there's, a f especially if, in the, if there's a few of you facing those problems, it's like, someone's got to give at some point. You're not getting, yeah. it's not making you any money. But even if the band's making money, you're not making money. No. No. Exactly, yeah. So yeah. It and it's also a time away from yeah. friends and family and it just, the further you go, the more that adds, adds up, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 all, it all sort of tots up and, you know, I mean, when we started Heartbreak, one of the first things I said was, I'm not going to jeopardise anybody's relationships. Or jobs. I'm not going to jeopardise anybody's <coughs> jobs, anybody's money. Yeah. If you can't afford to do it, if you can't take the time off, if you can't do a show because you can't get the time off work, we're just not going to do the show. Yeah. yeah. And everybody just nodded and smiled and went, yeah, you know, because I've been through it. I've, be, yeah. I've been through it where you, you sort of sat there and, you know, you turn out your girlfriend and you're having Sunday dinner and you get a phone call saying, oh, you've got to be in Manchester in three hours' time. I've mm. got your sports slot. And you're going, I'm having dinner with the, <laughs> with the in-laws, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then you just go, bang, put as much food in your mouth as you can and go, yep. sorry, I'm going to have to go. <laughs> yeah. I've had the same. I remember at one point, I was at a wedding, a good friend's wedding. We had a gig at a biker rally at like two, three o'clock, I think it was. So I went right. to the wedding <laughs> and then said, right, I've got to go. Went to the gig and then came back. And then it was like they'd finished all the food. Oh, they were just starting the evening meal. So I just right. I had the, had the wedding, went for the afternoon food. Went to the gig, came back, and just for the evening food. So they're just like, "Oh, you just here for the food?" Yeah. <laughs> and it's just like that's things like that will happen more and more. It's just to the point. It's like, yeah, we need a break, or mm -hmm. you know, someone's got to give. Yeah, yeah. But it's difficult though, because you you seem to put all your time into it, hmm. and then I, I'm not sure how you felt, but to then not have that, it's like, yeah. if we have a, a bit of a break from rehearsing or something like that, it's like you don't, you're you, on edge. You, yeah. you kind of like. That's feel part of the reason why like I, you should I be started this. Because yeah. I thought, yeah. if I'm not playing, I want to talk to people yeah. who are doing it. Oh, Playing, I know. Yeah. I've not. This is probably the longest I've spoken to you, too. Yeah. No. In, one, no. in one go. Oh, in one go, yeah. That's what yeah. I mean. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like, that's part of the reason. Because yeah. you talk to people at gigs here and there, but you never really get to actually talk to no. them. People are always busy. If, like, like, if your gig together. or it's my gig, yeah. then I've got to go off, or you've got to go off. Yeah. And it's yeah. just like, hey, how are you doing? You're a twat. See you later. There's a few people say that. A few people say that. It's not normally me being the wind-up merchant. But it's always, hasn't he got nice hair? <laughs> Honestly, I'm, I wish it worked on people my own age. But it's not, it's all like the 60, 70-year-olds that men. all go, oh. It's always the men as well. <laughs> if I had just a few of them curls, it's like, you know. It's not just curly on my head either. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, How do you know? <laughs> you showed me. Time. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what you're doing there. So we mentioned about you going away a lot. You go to America a lot. Yeah. How did this start? 
You seem. I, I'm guessing you seem to like save all your money just so you can go to America. Pretty much, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of like. A, um, well, I've, I've grown up and I love Motley Crue. My favorite band. So I gathered. I, I like. <laughs> I like. Did you go to the finale? Yeah, yeah. I went to the last so two gigs. Yeah. Um, but a friend of mine moved out to Los Angeles for college. Right. And she messaged me and she was like, "Oh, I guess where I'm going to college." I'm like, "No idea." Scarborough. <laughs> and she went. She went Los Angeles, and I was like, "Hmm." And she should come and visit. I was like, all right then. Damn right. So I did, and I loved it, and I've been there. The first time I went was 2010. Right. And I think I've been maybe, I think this was my 12th, 13th time <laughs> when I went in January. <laughs> so it was, it's all right. It's a nice place. So what's, do you usually do the similar things each time you're there? Go to the same Kind places, of, yeah. Or? Yeah, I went to the um, the Nam show. Yeah, Nam. You've been there yeah. I've been there, I think, third year I've been. And it's it's chaos, but it's it's a great time to be on like out there because there's so many shows going yeah, on. Yeah, it's good for drummers. Ev- everybody's in town, yeah. and, and just so much happening. Mm. And like, I went to a couple of free jam nights, and you go in, and there's some of the best musicians in the world. Yeah, playing in <coughs> a bowling alley or something <laughs> like that. And it's yeah, it it's really it's weird. But over the times I've been there, I've kind of met more and more people, and like built up a bit of a network of people. Yeah, and yeah. just kind of meet up with people and go out for a few drinks or go to a gig together or just go out yeah. for something to eat because isn't that how um, Sand- Dave Sanders got the thingy gig yeah um, Steel yeah. Panther because Panther, yeah. he was out there yeah. it was like a chance thing was yeah. it I can't I remember think the actual story but that was uh, I'm sure that was Lexi was drinking with Steel Panther's manager's ah, wife right, or right. something like that it was, it was some strange but yeah scenario but, yeah but them sort of things are just so natural out there because everyone's just kind of everyone's so inquisitive and want yeah. to know everything about yeah. you and what you're doing over there and what you're being up to and there's people and here a bit more over here <laughs> and especially around here people are kind yeah, of like that's true don't really care yeah <laughs> but out there everyone wants to know and th- there's maybe that the negative side of it where the, they want to see what you are and who you are and what you're yeah. doing so then they can find out if they can use you or not and there's, oh, there's that kind them. of yeah but yeah. I always think it's quite a positive thing when you're out there and everyone's yeah. kind of still networking and everyone it? interacts with you and yeah. it, it's it's great especially that time of year like January and is round, that when you normally go up. yeah but I've been throughout the year um, I've been through summer yeah and I can't really afford to do that because flights are so expensive that's and true accommodation yeah. always like shoots through the roof yeah but them sort of time of year the flights are so much cheaper and so you've been to all the usual famous Haunts like uh, yeah. Rainbow, Rainbow Bar yeah. Grill. The pizza in there is the best pizza <laughs> it's ever. All heard, it's all heard. I love it. I do like my pizza. Where else I do you go like while you're there? It was in the whiskey and everything like oh, that. Of course, whiskey a go-go. So it was a free free jam night in there now. All right. It's, it's brilliant. It's like, <laughs> just Did you jam? <laughs> no, because it's kind of it's like pre-organized sort of thing. So mm. people know who they're playing with, but they've never played together. I see. Right. And yeah. It just, everyone's kind of thrown together and... We should run them around here. It's like... Just go and just... Well, you do. You get the open mic nights, don't you? Yeah, Yeah, but they're usually just acoustics, aren't they? Like if there was a full band set up, you just go and just... Did you used to have that in uh, in Maryport, in Bubbles? Mm -hmm. You used to have the the full band set up and you could go on a Sunday, but the only problem was it got worse as the day went on because everybody just... Fucking hammered. Everybody was drunk. (laughs) It's no. just Mary Potter. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I remember walking in because I, I mean, I used to go there quite a bit, and you used to go down, and all the old guys are sat with the acoustics, and then you would get some younger ones that would want to be playing on the drums, and it just turned into chaos. So it just yeah. it ended up just acoustics. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I ended up with a go with a big double bass and all that <laughs> sort of stuff, and it's something which I've never had to go with. But you know, where you look at something, you go. Oh, I right, can do that. How hard can it be? <laughs> yeah. And do you know what? It, it is bloody hard. Yeah, that was you know, you can imagine. You know, you stood <laughs> it's there. It's a big unit. Yeah, I was going to say. You know, and, and, you, and you try to play, and the guy's going, no, you need to twist your hand. And I'm like, yeah, but I'm, this is how you play bass. And he's going, no, it's not. <laughs> not you know, that's this bass, pal. <laughs> and he's, he's showing us, and I'm like, no, nah, I'll, I'll just, I'll stick to the normal ones. <laughs> you know. So you've got, you've got quite a eccentric stage attire, I would say. Especially your pants. <laughs> Have you got like a yeah. you've got like a person or a company who Yeah, does them? Chad. Yeah, what's Chad. The, what's, what's the name of the company? Uh, it's Chad Cherry Clothing. Um, I'll put it in show notes. He's the um, lead singer for Las Vegas. Mm. 
who we toured with. Um, yeah, he sort of came over and it was one of them, you know, where you sort of downtime through the tour and you're yeah. sort of talking away and it was just a case of give us a couple of pair of jeans and I'll take them back with us. And that's what he done. And Done ever since. Yeah. Every cool. every once in a while, I'll buy a couple of pairs fr- from the States, Yeah, send them straight to him and then he just does what he wants. And Pretty snazzy. <laughs> just sends them back out. He's great. They look cool. They yeah. look really cool. Yeah. Go, they go with your whole look, I think. Like, because you, some of your bases as well, you've got some cool bases. Yeah. I've your collection's growing. It's got a few. It is. <laughs> uh, it, it, uh, we won't be enough room for your missus yeah. soon. <laughs> don't, don't. <laughs> 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 uh, Let's uh, just go there, shall we? I've, uh, I've heard the rule of one in, one out now. And... Uh, Depends what she's talking about. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which uh, which is one of them where it's like you sort of, another guitar catches your eye and you go, I need to sell one. And you go, but which, you know, what, what do you part Probably the one that with? you haven't played for. for oh, there's, there's basses that have sat in a case for 15 years. <laughs> um, that says it all, really. But him and Luke don't help each other because they keep sending each other pictures of guitars yeah, uh, going, you should buy this one, you should buy this one. <laughs> So it's kind of like, I'm so, so like, they both got no money. Yeah, it's like pretty, it's a pretty one. much, <laughs> pretty much. But no, it's 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 sort of thing where I've picked them up over the years. Mm. You know, yeah. There's there's ones which I bought with my paper money and all that sort <laughs> of stuff, and I just won't get rid of them. I think I've sold your ho- bass guitar hoarder. Yeah, mm. I've, I've sold three basses that I've owned and bought one back, and I bought one back. <laughs> <laughs> I sold it, and two months later, yeah, I asked for I it back. Do it. I can't do it. I need it back. Yeah, that was honestly what it what it was like. Waking in the middle of the night, going, "Oh my god, oh my god!" Yeah. Cold sweat. <laughs> and I think it took it took us two years to to actually grind him down, and I got it. I actually made fifty quid. I think I think I, I, think I actually I think I fair, actually, that's quite impressive. That's good. I think I sold him it for like. 200 don't, quid. Just don't tell him. No, and I sold it. And he's forgotten how <laughs> yeah. much you bought. So, sold it for... Th- oh, yeah. What was it? I sold you it for bought it for me 300 quid, so I'll have it for 250. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, it, it, I think his brother done, done the deal with us. It was his brother that sorted it, and I was just like, all right, it's yeah. Not, he's right. not going to hear this, is he? He might. <laughs> he might. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's funny. So what was it like when you went from a four-piece down to a three-piece then, when Callum left? Uh... Did you think about getting a, a replacement? Or we had, did it, we was had it a the, no-brainer? We had it lined up. We, had, we we pretty much sat and worked out who we wanted. Um, and we sort of lined it up and, and everything was sorted up until pretty much the rehearsal part, yeah. didn't it? Uh, the guy who we wanted, he came to the shows. He, he sort of checked us out and everything. And he was happy with everything, you know. Um, and then it was one of them where we just sent a message out and says, oh, we're getting together. Because we hadn't rehearsed once Callum left, I think we took like a month off, yeah, just to sort of take stock of where we were at, try and work out what we we're gonna do. We um, did the, it was Rock Mantic, wasn't it? Yeah, we did Ro- the, like the co-ed line with Thirteen Stars on the Friday night, and then that was the last one for Callum. Right, and it was like, oh, where do we go? Yeah, and yeah. it was kind of took a bit of time and just said we had this potentially lined up, and then when it didn't happen. We we were sat there thinking, well, who else could we ask? And we just thought, well, why waste time trying to find somebody when we could just get back into it and just yeah. see how it goes? And as if a, three if a replacement comes up, it comes up. If it well, exactly, that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it was just, it just happened, happened kind <sighs> of naturally, really. We just we started working on some new songs. Yeah. Because I suppose it changed the compl- songwriting yeah. a bit as well. Yeah. yeah. Of you. So we're playing. The old songs and people were like, oh, it feels like there's a guitar missing here, a guitar missing. And we just said, well, for writing new songs, make it fit that. People so. don't know yeah. how that sounds. I was going to say so. actually the first time because you didn't you didn't really announce it, did you? Well, <laughs> <laughs> that's the sort of what what we said was when there was four of us, we all said together, we'll do a proper band announcement. You know, nobody say anything. We'll put it all out properly. We'll we'll do it professionally. Yeah. We'll do it all from the band page. And then before we even walked on stage on the Friday, Callum decided to put it all over Facebook that it was his last show and oh, this, right. that and the other. And we just went, well, that's just, oh, right. <laughs> right. Yeah. that's sort of done that with that. So we just left it at that. Just kind of went, it. 
Oh yeah. Because I he's gone. I must have. I didn't know they'd put that because we played with you Melfest. Yeah. And that was the first one. With, I think I got base. there. Oh no, you guys started playing, and I hadn't noticed. Yeah. So that's a compliment to you guys. Yeah. I remember you saying that actually. And then yeah. I was like, "There's only three of them. Where's Cal? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the, I think this, this, the sound of the three piece works. That's because yeah. sometimes it can either expose a band as like they definitely need to replace that person, yeah. or you adapt, which I think you've done quite. The thing quite is, well. me and him's used to playing as a three piece with Airwall. Yeah. It happened. Good we rhythm were, section. We started off as a, as a <clears throat> four piece, and yeah. then one of the lads went to uni in Bournemouth. So then he wasn't able to travel back. Right. So then it was just the three of us, and we just kind of worked at it like Adapted. that. So, so we, we know how to, yeah. to fill things as a three piece sort of so thing. So these are the of, first songs, those are the songs that you've wrote since you've been a three piece now. Yeah. This yeah. Is the product yeah. of that. Yeah. yeah. Cool. And there's, there's maybe three, maybe four that we've written outside that, of that. Yeah, that could potentially have gone on there, but right. rather than try and rush it and get them recorded. So we've got some new songs to so how many releases have you had now it's a fourth yeah. oh, three eps right. and the album so. so how long could you play live for if you if you got asked to do you think we try to work this out because because yeah. we, we've got that show in march on on the 17th and we've only ever done one headline show other than that yeah have you yeah i thought you were doing more than that we well, we've, it's just been one of them where we've been busy enough through the years just doing supports yeah so we've never yeah. really need to do our own shows and yeah. then uh we went down to leeds to do yeah. uh, our own show and i think i filled in a couple of like maybe 10 minutes on acoustic doing a couple of acoustic songs yeah um i think if we sat and learned everything there's well there's 17 on the album there's seven there there was five and then four on the right. first ep so it's quite Quite a bit of music there. There, yeah. there is. Yeah. Knocking on 30 so. songs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Looks quite good when you put them all together, yeah. doesn't it? You're like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> the only problem is we can't remember them all. Yeah, no, that's, <laughs> I think is some of them we've tried and they don't really work as a three piece, so it's kind of. Yeah. <clears throat> we've kind of just put to one side, but we might come back to them at some point and just yeah. kind of try it again and see. So, what you what other bands were you in before Heart Bit Remedy? With Airwall. Just Airwall. Yeah. yeah. I've I filled in with a couple of people. I played with a band called Raw Deal and we did did stuff in Cumbria yeah. and then up to like Dumfries and everything like that. Um, but they were together years back and then just said, are you up to much? And I said, not really. So went out and did that for a little bit and then and then we started, well, we were already doing Heartbreak at that point, were we? Mm. Well, I don't know, maybe not actually. I can't remember, to be honest. <laughs> all, all, these, yeah. all, all these years fly by. <laughs> Five years? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. It's like a blur, isn't it? Yeah. We've done, I, remember we've done when you, I remember when you started. I remember. 15 mm. years we've done Airwall, haven't we? Yeah, it'll be, it was 15 years in November, just gone. I think me and you has been in a rhythm section for 17. Yeah. <laughs> I've put up with them for more Men than half boy. my life. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, because we, we started out with a little band at school. And yeah, frets. Yeah. <laughs> the name Fritz. Yeah, that's what it was. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, and we've done the Lars. Yeah. Is there any evidence of this online? No, there won't be. Oh, this was before, not. This this was before be, there was yeah. cameras on mobile uh, phones. This is when we were like... See, some people won't even remember a time like that. This is when we were like 12 and 13. It's like yeah. <laughs> just some, some people, like now, will just... They'll always be internet, they'll yeah. always be mobile phones, yeah. they'll always even be Facebook. Yeah. No, I remember when Facebook started. I was a bit skeptical because I had MySpace. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I was Try like, go from MySpace. I'm like, not going, not going to Facebook. <laughs> I, I remember MSN Messenger. Like, going. When uh, Facebook Messenger started, I was like, why yeah. I've got, yeah, I've got MSN? Why would I ever want to do yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Couple years later, MSN Messenger gone. <laughs> that was I used to like that. And Bebo. And Bebo. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I used to like Bebo. <laughs> you were talking about that previous one. That was the only. Back in the day, that was the, your first social media, was it, Bebo? Well, yeah, that was that was my first social media. I think Bebo came between uh, MySpace and Facebook. Yeah, it did. Yeah. It did. So, w yeah, when I was getting into social media, it was Bebo, and that was. See, I couldn't use ten MySpace. Years ago. I always found I, MySpace I, I, awful. Yeah, I couldn't use it. It so went on someone's profile and had all these plugins on. Yeah. It like, took it forever. <laughs> I was like, I can't even I don't know what this <laughs> what, is. What is it? <laughs> it's <laughs> like <laughs> stars flash over. I was like, what the but we all had Tom as a friend. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so even if you had no friends, you had Tom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's, on, he's on Facebook with that is same he? setup. <laughs> is it him, though? Or is it somebody else? I think it's him. Is it? You never know these days. No, you never know these days. 
But yeah, it's like for younger people now. Say someone who's like 17, 18. Yeah. That's all they'll ever know. know they'll right. never know. It's like weird, isn't it? Even a CD. They probably they might have never bought a CD. Yeah. And like See, I love the whole vinyl revival thing. Yeah. Cause it, a lot of people do. Still I love it, but I absolutely hate it at the same time because the vinyls that you could use to pick up for a couple of quid yeah. in a charity shop, all of a sudden, like 20 quid, 30 quid, and you're going, you know, three or four years ago, I was only paying a couple of quid for yeah. these. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, that's, I suppose that's the impact of it becoming popular again. Yeah. Isn't it? yeah. But if some people, you think, what collections they've thrown away, just think, oh, oh well, yeah. these are gone, I might as well throw these yeah. out. Well, I've got a collection from a mum's cousin's daughter from the 80s. Right. She... I can't we're some family gathering she was just like I've got a box of like vinyl like do you want it <laughs> and I was like yeah please <laughs> so I've got all sorts I've got like Appetite for Destruction original wow. original version all sorts it's it's literally there's Warrant like there's original like pressings as well Bullet yeah. um, Bullet Boys Electric Boys wow. I've got a few like signed. boys don't you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love hate. There's a few Jizzy Pearl ones, yeah. um, all signed as well, and some of them were pic- picture discs and everything. It was, it was a great collection. Cool. So, I don't think vinyl will never go away. No, it's too. Yeah. Uh, you can't. You can't beat that sound. Definitely not. It's just getting a lot of bands find it hard to get it pressed because. It, um, well, what a lot of bands end up doing is to put a digital recording yeah, onto vinyl. Onto vinyl doesn't, doesn't work. Just, yeah. That doesn't. Yeah. That, Pointless. We yeah. were talking about that with mm. Tom, weren't we? Yeah. When we were doing the album, it has to be analog to begin with, otherwise yeah. there's yeah. no point. And uh, Tom was saying because he he done the Necromandus album, right? And they wanted it on vinyl, and they got the CD master and back, and they were like, "Yeah, great, fantastic." And then they'd done the first test pressing of the vinyl, and the ba- guys in the band are going, "Yeah, yeah, that's great. That sounds fantastic." And Tom went. Too much bass on that. Yeah. There's too much this, too much that. And he sent, and he sat and redone all the, you know, remastered it, and then sent it away to Pete Mayer. Pete Mayer, yeah. And he he done the final masters on it. Right. Again, so they had two different mixes. Ah, right. So they had the CD and the digital mix, and then the mixture again for the vinyl. So when you guys recorded this, were you all together all the time, or I think it was all recorded at the same exact yeah. yeah. same place. Yeah. 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 So it was like were you there most of the time, or did you just come for your part? Pretty much. I was. I yeah, was there. probably there most of the time. Yeah. yeah, I was there. Pretty much from. How long did How long did the whole thing take? Would you say? About three days, I think. On and off. Good going. About three. three yeah, maybe, three four yeah, days. Maybe maybe four days. Yeah. Because it, it was two yeah. days for drums first. Yeah. Scratches, drums, and bass. Did you do guy tracks? Yeah. 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 To do it. But it was one of them where we were working with clicks, yeah, and we realised that some songs weren't, we couldn't work it to the clicks. All oh, right, yeah, because we we sort of done stuff live. Like tempo that, changes in the songs. Yes, yeah, slightly. Yeah, but we, what we, we had didn't, nightmares with that. Yeah. But it wasn't stuff that we realised, right, until we put the click on, and then s- certain bits just wouldn't work. Ah, right. And it was so frustrating. We're like, and he said, "Well, I'll turn it off." And we played it and it was fine. Yeah. And it's like yeah. We had to do it um, in Pro Tools where the tempo of the track would drop. So right. it would go from like 170 to 120. Yeah. And we'd have to get used to, to going with it. To yeah. It and, uh, Luckily, we tackled that problem before. <laughs> yeah. Because we didn't have time to piss around with that. But no. it's tricky. It is it tricky. Is, yeah. But sometimes yeah. you need a tempo change. You have yeah, to exactly. Have it. Yeah. yeah. But you don't learn, you learn these things, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> but but what about playing to a click? Have you, was that, have you, you always used to that? I've done it a few times, um, but I just like I prefer to feel the groove rather than right. rather than have it yeah. set. And it's, it can be difficult though when you put the band yeah. together. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but yeah. Um, unless everyone had the click. Yeah. Because we tried it a couple of times in, in rehearsal and yeah. everything like that, and because I was the only one with the click, they would go on with their own speed, and it was just like uh, right. it, See, to try yeah. and pull us back to where we were, like to the Our click. Our producer Matt Ellis, he was like. He told us to make sure you rehearse with a click yeah. for a few weeks before you come here, just to yeah. get used to it. So that that did help. But also in the studio, his click was part of the drum kit. He would right, like okay. a hi hat or a cowbell yeah. or something, so it didn't jump out. Yeah, somebody get a digital click and it. Put, yeah. That's all you could hear. Yeah, but he put yeah. it in the mix, so it was right. just part of the fitting with the drum no, kit, which good. did help. Yeah, but definitely. I think it's a good skill to mm. learn to be able to oh, play definitely. because yeah. you never know when you might yeah. need it. Yeah, and more and more, I've got a metronome. Yeah, time metronome, and I just got a pad, and I just. 
put some headphones on and just kind of play to the click. Yeah. I think I think I have got a lot tighter with my yeah my time and everything like that. But so what was the drum recording process like for you? Quite nice. <laughs> <laughs> it was because the time before we'd re- um, record up there, I was in like a small little room, mm. and it just felt a bit awkward. Right. Where that time it was in one of the bigger rooms, and I just had I just felt like I could breathe a little bit more yeah it, a bit more relaxed. i wasn't yeah i wasn't like all yeah crunched up and did you film any of it while you're in the studio you yeah we've got, i've got i've got you? quite a lot of stuff i film, good film stuff everything now it's put you put music to yeah it's like yeah. good yeah. stuff because people don't normally can but, see stuff like that or people, but people forget to record it yeah. <laughs> yeah there's been a few times when that's happened but cause i try and record most live gigs as well and yeah, then yeah and I'll watch it back and kind of pick up on things. It's like a yeah. training tool for me. Yeah, we used to we used um, to do that, and we'd put it up as a private video and share it with yeah. the band, so we'd all watch it and yeah. see, pick up bits and pieces, like me forgetting lyrics. And <laughs> so you have singers that. forgetting oh, lyrics, never. I'm terrible for <laughs> it. Why do I have to write such a complicated fucking... <laughs> it, it just makes it up and nobody knows. Yeah. <laughs> so the worst bit is, it's for the covers. I mean, um, we've been in Airwall for, for 15 years. Yeah. And played some of the songs. I mean, we've done Cult Little Devil for 15 years. And I come to sing it at, uh, over Christmas. We've done a show over Christmas, do you yeah. know what I mean? And I, I come to sing it, and I just had a total mind blank. Happens. And somebody come up to us at the end, and they just went, how could you forget the words to Little Devil? And I went, I don't know. How many times have you sang it? You know, it's, it's been the set list. You probably Pretty sang much, it, didn't it? Yeah, every gig. <laughs> Little yeah. Devil's pretty much been in the set. Probably sing it more than Ian Asprey. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the last 15 years, and it happens, just it could happens. not get it out. You don't have times when you like start the wrong song? Or yeah, we, we, yeah. Did it, <laughs> we did it years back at Silver Bay Festival. And we were doing, um, it was the Airwall. Monarch Street Preachers, Yeah, wasn't Motorcycle it? Emptiness. And I was starting with, um, I probably tried about 15, 16 different, different beats and just couldn't get my head in as well. Let's do the next one. It was just like, no. <laughs> it just wasn't happening. Well, we've had situations where I've missed a song and I've said the next song. Yeah. So I've skipped a song. So and then we have to try and work out, where do we go back? Yeah. Sometimes it gets lost and we never go back. Sometimes yeah. we manage it. But I've done that I've done that a trillion. Because <laughs> we didn't finish the song how I wanted to. Yeah. <laughs> so you so, just skipped the song. I was so, like, so, obviously we're not doing that one. I'm sitting there, I'm like... Because, how it works is we normally do to kill a butterfly into truth and the work into each other. Mm-hmm. But we just stopped it dead. Oh, yeah, we've done that. Yeah. And I just turned around and I just went, Next song. What? What? <laughs> what? And it just sort of like knocked Through, us yeah. a little yeah. bit. Yeah. And I just went, Do you want to know something? Tune up because it's in drop D. Oh, I went, yeah. Let's tune back up the stand. Let's just carry on with the set. And the, him and Luke's gone. Are we not doing truth? I was like, no, <laughs> no, I've up. decided. Didn't notice. <laughs> Completely forgot about it. But. Ah, but these these things happen. It's it's, but, but it, it's more. It happens to everyone, even the professionals. So yeah. it's like yeah. it's more how you handle it than exactly. Because yeah. you see, some people it really they let it, they let them they let it get to them. Yeah, to the point where they that goes back more. to what we were saying before about the backing tracks. If yeah. they're all lined up, and they're like, they come too reliant on that, don't it's they? It's like, oh, we need to skip this one mm. and if everyone's because then you're relying on technology yeah. exactly that's yeah. what's going to let yeah. you down isn't it Definitely. like literally your yeah. brain is your brain but yeah. technology you yeah. can do without it yeah but, have, have you got any like what's your best like fuck ups that you can think of have you got any funny ones uh, I don't think I, I've done some stupid stuff <laughs> <laughs> haven't we I've all done, I've done a <laughs> lot of stupid stuff to be honest I think the first four four gigs for Fallen Red on the Star Rats tour, I'd done so much stupid each night on stage. <laughs> Mostly ending up on your back, I think. Yeah. First. <laughs> Alcohol. Yeah. First night, I fell over the monitor backwards on Brickyard. Went in front of the monitor and I didn't see it. And I just stepped back, flat on my back. Uh, Dan, can you remember Dan who was a guitar tech? Oh, yeah. 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 He come and just scooped us up, put us back on my feet because I was that drunk. <laughs> Next night, I went through the stage in Nottingham. Well, as in down? Yeah, 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 yeah. That doesn't sound the, like a very good board, stage. The <laughs> board just collapsed, that giveaway, so I ended up going through. Next night we were in Yardbirds. I threw the drumstick, I put my bass to feedback 
on the stack. I threw a drumstick at it and flew out near the lass in the front row. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the next night, I was I was on the floor with the bass and I was knocking hell out of it. And then I just ran and went to kick the strings just so it j- made that big noise. Yeah. And I didn't. I just <laughs> nearly broke my toe and actually booted the <laughs> body of the bass. But successful tour. It, it was rough. <laughs> it was rough to be honest. And then. Uh, I think with Airwall, I got stuck up on a PA stack. Hmm. Yeah, you got done, rescued. I've done that once, I got you rescued. You got already thought, how the fuck am I going to get down? Yeah, yeah. Pretty yeah. Much, but it, yeah. It, was, it was wobbling like that. Oh, it was going God. back and forward, and I had two guys, two big fellas, holding the PA stack while I was standing on top of it, fuck and playing away, and it was just like, <laughs> how do I get back down here? <laughs> so I had to wait till the end of the song, pass my bass down, then climb down, which looked like the... The anti-climax. Yeah, yeah. The girliest way to do it. <laughs> And then I've jumped yep. off a table and a woman was leaning back like that. And I hit a square across the bridge of her nose with the bottom Ooh. of my base. That was a good old crack. I seen her the next day. And she, had, and, <laughs> and, uh, she had two black eyes. Yeah. Uh, it was her own fault. She shouldn't have been looking backwards. Shouldn't be looking at your ass, shouldn't she? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> she wasn't. She was looking at his face. <laughs> she got mixed up. What's the difference? <laughs> oh, come on, boys. <laughs> Got so, <laughs> Sorry, I've got feelings, you know. Yeah, but like, are you the, if you go on YouTube, you can see loads of examples of like professional bands completely yeah. fucking a song up. Yeah, like even literally starting the wrong song, which is like <laughs> done that a few times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, done that yeah. a few I've times. Done that before. Yeah, I've started in the wrong one, key. Yeah, forget it off. Oh, forget the chin the guitar and start. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think the best one, one of the best ones we ever had was when we played the Snooty Fox in Wakefield. Yeah, and it was the first song so we just changed the song that we because we'd had the same song for ages so we'd like to start with this song and Steve just had a blank autopilot and it was like because in Snooty Fox they used, to, they used to have where the thing would go up so oh, yeah. all, all oh, the drums yeah, yeah. on the front yeah. and he, uh, Malcolm would introduce you yeah. Yeah. and the, the, the screen would go, would go up, up and you're there and you're like right let's go but it started with Steve Steve like digga ding digga ding but he just forgot which song he just kind of you can see on the video it's been his film as well exactly and he just remembers it like <laughs> just before the point where people were thinking he's fucked up. Yeah. yeah. People were like, Someone's oh, not he's right. just making us always remembered. <laughs> Excellent. Your but favorite... he never forgot again after that though. Yeah. Like... <laughs> His favourite one at the minute is doing your pedal and yeah. forgetting to turn your pedal back on before you can hear yeah. No, the tuner. Oh, because it cuts off. Yeah, yeah, to mute. <laughs> and I have habit of, I have habit of walking <laughs> over to Luke and just like, are we, you know, sort of each song I'd sort of turn on I'm like we're good to go yeah yeah but by then I've walked away from the pedal board and my mind's <laughs> my oh, mind's on, the next song, on yeah. plane yeah yeah. so it's like the click comes in and it's just like one, two, three, four. and I'm like <laughs> <laughs> what's wrong <laughs> Chilean's I've done it three times yeah. I think in one set yeah. oh god start start of each song and so I you put that on just to Dead in the sound. Yeah, while yeah. You talk and stuff. Well, the thing is, because I use a hollow body quite a bit now, ah, right. so by the time I've got a few distortion pedals on and the stack and everything like that, it just feeds back really easily. Right. So I now just use the use it to mute really. Bit of a noise gate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just just mute it till I need to while yeah. I do all my fancy pantsy walking across the stage and lead, lead vocal <laughs> stuff and yeah. you know. And yeah, stand up comedy in between songs. And yeah, all that. yeah, yeah. Well. <laughs> try, <laughs> try. <laughs> he laughs. You've got to try. Him, <laughs> he you? laughs. Yeah. Do you normally have a mic and you talk? I don't talk. But I do back and vocals. But ah, okay. He's banned me from talking. You're the talking. only talker, are you? <laughs> he's banned Pretty me from talking. Try, you, you try and keep Luke away from. Yeah. You know when Callum was. <laughs> he's hitting all his words about you, like pushing him away. <laughs> yeah. I remember. I remember when Callum was in the band. Pretty much every gig he would try and sell him. Yeah. That, that, that <laughs> was Luke. Try, try and auction him off. Yeah. That was pretty much every. Every don't gig. think we actually ever managed to though. No. <laughs> <laughs> but he tried. I remember tried. him doing it in, in the O2 at Newcastle. And everybody just sort of looked blankly. <laughs> I, and I got caught off guard. I went for like a drink of water and all I heard was, <laughs> Yep, give us a tenner and you can have column one night. Do whatever you want. And we're like, like where the hell's this come from? Looked at him and he was just in a fits of laughter. <laughs> Tell you yeah. what I saw the other day, which I'd never seen before. You know, is it Danny McCormack, the bass yeah, player yeah, from yeah. Thingy? Danny, yeah. Where he broke, did he dislocate his knee at a festival? I can't remember what it 
was. It was the place playing the Wild Hearts. He hasn't dislocated. He's lost his no, leg. No, this was years ago. All oh, right. right. No, I haven't seen that. I think it was at like it was at a big festival and it was like halfway through the first right. song. You you only just see someone shared it and I hadn't seen it. You only just see him, like he must. I don't know. You don't see what he did, but you see him kind of like go like that, mm. and then it looks back. He, it, it kind of just a split second and he's on the floor like this, and like someone's like like propping him up, and then it doesn't. You never see him for right. ages, and the rest of the guys just playing. Then it goes back and he's just sat in a box. But he played the whole Ooh. show, whole show with his fucking knee. You could see him playing, like sitting down, going. Yeah. And I'm like, fuck it. <laughs> but it was like, the, it was like Reading or something like that. It was yeah, that okay. level. Yeah. He's like, I'm not fucking. I'm not. I'm yeah. not leaving this stage. Got to do it. Yeah. And I was just like, wow. It's kind of with the like Dave Grohl thing as well, isn't it? It's like yeah, he broke his leg. Yeah, went to the hospital, like, got a cast on, came back. Came back. He's on the he's on the floor. And that guy's holding him. I know. I know <laughs> yeah. I broke my leg. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I'm like, I'm liking the fact you're calm. It's like, if if that was me, I suppose it should be adrenaline, wouldn't it? Yeah, I yeah. guess. Yeah. Because uh, yeah. did you have you seen the, how he fell? He chipped over a wire yeah, on the stairs. Down the front. Is that what it was? A wire? Yeah. yeah. Cable. All right. Just tripped and he tried to stop himself, but it was like the drop was like ridiculous. Yeah. Must have been. He did well to just break a leg because he could have fractured a wrist or. Yeah. Especially because he had his guitar as well. But guitar didn't have a scratch on it. No. <laughs> no. He's like an alcoholic. He like fall over but not yeah. spill, a pint, spill a drop of your pint. I saw a guy do that once. Um, he plays in the Thin Lizzy tribute and he fell backwards over a. Um, small little stage but over one of the monitors and he fell like <laughs> back off this stage but kept hold of his guitar and I was like wow. I was like you alright he was like is the guitar alright and like <laughs> I was like are you alright just landed flat on your back and he was like yeah the guitar's alright it's fine I'm happy have you got, so, a, have you got a favourite gig that you've done as Heartbreak Remedy so far I think NLC takes some beat yeah that, that's always good yeah, where's that held Nottingham Nottingham, Nottingham in Mays, yeah um I think we've done four or five years there, mm. and uh, every again. time, every time we go down, it's great gig, great yeah. crowd, great sound, you know. And Dave's asked us back again and again, and give him a shout out. Yeah, yeah, Dave Tony is a legend. Yes, yep. he is. I think there's only a few tickets left, so anybody that's wanting to go to NLC, please get your tickets. Buy t-shirts as well because they look great. Are you at this, this year's? Yeah, yeah. When it's is a, it? it's last year, this year. When it's, is it? Fifth uh, and sixth of March. May. No, May. 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 Sorry. May. So you've got long oh, yeah, like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> What month are we on? It's March tomorrow. Can you believe it? Yeah, yeah no. It's fifth and sixth of May yeah. down at the Mays in Nottingham NLC Festival. It's his, it's his last one that he's yeah. doing. I don't know whether they're going to carry on without him. Um, yeah. Yeah. But it's a good cause. They should carry Definitely, on. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody will. Yeah. Um, but it is just a fantastic lineup this year. Yeah. Um, but everyone down there, you know everybody, and it's just yeah, it's like, like a, a big community. Yeah, it's yeah. A big, yeah, big friendship group, so it's it's perfect. It's you often find that you know, you've, you've, there's always like the same group of people who like. Yeah, like, it's quite impressive, really. That all they do their spare time is go to these yeah, gigs. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you always see them, and they're just like they only know each other from these gigs, but they've been friends for years. It's like is that yeah, a ghost cool. train? <laughs> 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 oh shit! I should have said yeah. It's a ghost. <laughs> He's like, I have to leave now. <laughs> No, Excellent. but um, yeah, there's a few. There's a few of those. Like, um, mm. what's the one by Matt Black of Faran? Oh yeah. Is yeah. It, um, what's it called? I want to say Redemption. Yeah, Redemption Festival. That's another good one, which yeah. he started for. You know, as a good cause, and yeah. it's just kind of gone. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. Done really well. Yeah. It's a good venue that as well. Isn't yeah, it? it is. Yeah. Um, because yeah. we're doing, we're going to be at the podcast. We're going to be at Wildfire. Right. Right. Yeah. I messaged you because we done we done last year, didn't we? Yeah. That was well, when you had your mental. Yeah, I was I was on a support tour playing with a band called Alexa De Strange with Chris Holmes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we were playing in Stoke on the Saturday night, but we were playing at Wildfire, so we organised our time, so we were playing early on. Earlier and then later, So yeah. I, I drove from Stoke, got a high car, drove from Stoke up to Wildfire, played back down to um, Sutton and Ashfield on the night, and it was just like, I got back and I was like, Right in time for sound for line for loading, sorry. And I was like, oh, if I'd have left it like half an hour. <laughs> but no, it was good. It was good. You're like, was which like, band I mean again? Yeah, no, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> a three different set lists with us. I was like, which one is it? But no, it was it was a long day that, but well worth yeah. it. Like, it's gotta be done. I just wish I could have stayed at Wildfire for a bit longer. Oh, it's great, great it? festival. Yeah. But I went, I went for the full mm. weekend, and it was, it was great. Yeah. 
Well, yeah, he said because he, he, obviously he was on here and he did invite. He said we can go again, but <laughs> it's weird because I want to obviously I want to go and camp and get pissed and all that, but I can't do yeah. these. I can't yeah, exactly. do conversations like this or like that. So <laughs> yeah. I have to like go for the day or the evening and then. I you know, can stay in camp if you want, but I what, can't. What you yeah, do cool. is you I'll take over the show yeah. in the morning. <laughs> Oh yeah, that'd be great. Hungover, yeah, yeah, fantastic. It's the easiest way because just have one one pint in the morning as soon as you get up. That's it. Hair of the dog. Exactly, exactly. Right, and then you sort it. it. Do a few interviews, and then you just get back on it. The only problem is, don't promise anybody a a podcast Mm. for the next day because you'll probably forget, and then somebody will rock up and go, "Oh, you, you said that I could do one," and. Well, last year it was like we didn't know, we just we didn't know what it was gonna be like because we've never done one before. So we just went on the Saturday and just sort of set up in a room and went. Well, right, I suppose we get some guests really. <laughs> and I sent then I sent then I just start looking at the the timetable and I started messaging a few bands and saying we're up here, do you want to come and do it? And we ended up with uh, uh, Matt Black of Ferran and yeah. and the drummer and um, what's his name? Kyle. Kyle. Kyle Lamley. Lamley All right, see ya. Whoop de fucking do. Yeah. <laughs> And it was just a bit like, so next time we're going to sort of message the bands well in advance yeah, and yeah, say, yeah, this yeah. is where we're going to be because yeah. we'll have a key for the room this time. Because we didn't have a key, so we couldn't leave all the gear. Right, so we were a bit trapped right. in the room, weren't we? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you had to go and do a food run and then I had to go. <laughs> and then people came in. Yeah, we, people were just like, popping their heads. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> they, like, they had some stuff in the corner and they were just like, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but now we can like, walk the door go, fuck off. We won't yeah. disturb you. <laughs> but I was literally... For um, the first one, I was running around the field just going, which musician is doing it? Oh, him. Yeah. I'll yeah. talk to him. Come with me. Come <laughs> yeah. with me. They were like, I don't even know what this is. Yeah. But now, see people know what it is. Yeah. So. <laughs> should, should do a few drunk ones and just see how it turns do out. Do a drunk cast. And just, Definitely. Yeah. Well, they have got that, that uh, drunken histories, haven't they? Yeah. Oh, that's great, isn't it? It's a great have you show. Have seen it? TV show. They get like celebrities and comedians <laughs> to talk about certain things in history, but they get them pissed while they're doing it. <laughs> and they just kind of, it just goes off on one. But then that's they brilliant. do like, they do uh, people like acting it out as well. So while they're talking, they get all these people like acting out sort of yeah. thing. It's like done in post production sort of thing, but it's hilarious. <laughs> it's like <laughs> if you haven't seen it, watch it. It's so I was going to ask, like, what was your favorite bands when you were? What's your musical influences that got you into music? Oh, favorite bands got to be the Who. Favorite all time band is the oh, Who. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, when I first went home and told my dad that I was starting guitar lessons and all that sort of thing. My dad just went, right, he says, sit and watch this. He says, you know, this this is what you want. And uh, it was a Who live in Detroit, I think it was. And it was on vi- video. People, some people won't know what that yeah. is. It was on, it was on <laughs> video. Yeah. Yeah. Google it, see what it was many years ago. <laughs> and it was, I'm sure it was Tommy. Oh, yeah. the, the, they played all the way through Tommy yep. and then they'd done like greatest hit set and it was about three hours long and I sat and I didn't move Yeah, and I was just sort of stuck there and then it, it sort of once I got more into you know guitars and everything like that, you, you sort of go off and you find other bands but we originally started off as a blues band didn't we so mm-hmm. I sort all of right. listened to a lot of like you know B.B. King and, and Buddy Guy and all them sort of people yeah. I mean Stevie Ray Vaughan's one of the best guitar players that ever walked the earth, you know, and it, it's that sort of stuff. So I, I like a lot of 60s and 70s rock. Um, sort of got into the 80s more once we started doing Airwall a lot, you know, and you started learning of the Guns N' Roses, your Motley Crue and all that yeah. sort of stuff. And, you know, it's just one of them. I think the more you play and you hear your different styles, you sort of get into different people, and you, and, you, and you start doing moods. Yeah. You know, it's not a case of, you know, this is my favourite band, I'm going to listen to this all the time. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's some days where a Who track will come on my iPod mm. and I'll switch it off. If you've overheard it, or you're just because not Because yeah, it's just not my cup of tea. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So have you, when you were in AWOL, have you always been the bass player slash singer? Yeah. yeah. Uh, not always the singer. Mm. We've, had, we've had three or four different singers. I started off as a singer. Very briefly. Did you always want to be a singer? No. No, same here. You still don't want to be a singer. <laughs> so I still, I still, I still nobody, else, nobody else will do it. I, I still don't want to be the singer. Yeah. But he it keeps turning up. <laughs> nobody else will do it, will they? But, yeah, that, that's one of them things. It, with Airwall, it was a case of we had a load of gigs and somebody, somebody had to sing. Yeah. Yeah. 
and that's basically how I've learned how, how to sort of get away with it, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, yeah like a, a lessons at all. No, no, no. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm not going to turn around and say that I'm a, you know, a full-blown singer. I've just got away with it for <laughs> <laughs> a lot of years. How did yeah. you find singing and playing at the same time? Um, you just sort of, same again, you know, you, you sort of deal with it over the years. At, at first, it's not the easiest of things, but... You find some songs harder than others. Yeah. Sometimes songs that you think, oh, piece of piss, why can't I do this? And then other songs that are quite common, you think, I'll never be able to play this thing yeah. at the same time. I can do it, it's weird. But the thing is, because I started so, I mean, I was, I was lead singing and bass playing when I was 13, 14. Mm. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm... That helps. <laughs> 20, 29 Older now. in two week and you know I've, I've, I've done it for that long now you are you the oldest in the band no <laughs> I'm the youngest yeah he's the youngest 20 you're 29 yeah how yeah. old are you 30 how old is Luke 31 in a couple of weeks ah, okay beginning of April they're all similar age yeah pretty much yeah. <laughs> Ran the youngest yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm the middle one the forgotten child it's not, it's not like the brothers <laughs> I'm the middle one <laughs> I'm, I'm the, the youngest one. I'm the favourite <laughs> we pr- pretty much are now it's like I've known yeah. you since I was probably about five or six or something like that yeah so yeah um, but yeah when we were in school like years back I don't even know what year it was we did a our school did a full scale production of The Wall by Pink Floyd. All right. So it was kind of like, I don't even know if that was before Air Wall or when, but yeah, that was quite. So, what was your role involvement in that? Drummer and bass. Yeah. Yeah. And and then, it, it was a full, full live band. Yeah. Wow. And we had The Wall and we did a load of. So, was that like, like your first sort of experience of doing something like that? Pretty much. Of, yeah. that, of that size, mm-hmm. yeah. 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 But that was pretty cool. It was, it was, it was a lot of work. Yeah, I was going to say, it was, it was a long lot time of work. Yeah, the rehearsals Production. and all yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. when you've got a full live band and you've got again ten different singers yeah. playing Pink, mm. and you know you've got you've got to learn all the songs, how they all go into one another, and then you've got three guitar players, two keyboard players, your drummers. Your there was even a horn section, I yeah. think, and you've got to try and get all of that, and you're only 13, 14. 13, 14. <laughs> <laughs> the, the the band, yeah, that. Yeah. I think I think the average age of the band was fourteen. Yeah. Wow. You know, it was, it was, it was mad. Cool. <laughs> it was cool though. Yeah, yeah. We did a lot of um, like video stuff before. So while we were playing behind the wall, it was like video screens with. Ah, with cool. It's got to be with Pink Floyd, doesn't it? Yeah. But it was a visual band, isn't it? Yeah, but it was it was awesome. We even yeah. had a plane that flew into the wall and kind of like <laughs> explored the wall and everything like that. It's it was it's quite epic. Yeah, looking back, you're like, looking back, yeah. Cool. yeah. <laughs> and but the thing is, I can't stamp Pink Floyd. Yeah. Well, I've <laughs> grown. Yeah, my dad loves them, so I've grown. I would come as a fan, but I, some of them fans yeah. quite like. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe one or two. There's a couple of songs now I hear, like that we played on the wall, and it was like, oh, I like this song. I remember yeah. this one now. Yeah. So who else? Who else do you like? Uh, what would you say was a big influence on you? I think you've got to have the Stones, Zeppelin, bit of. Does that all come from your dad as well? Yeah, or? yeah. My mum and dad, I, I mean, I remember being really young and it was all like Queen and Meat Loaf. And I love Queen. And all mm. that. But I don't like Queen. Oh, okay. <laughs> it, 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 it is one of them things where it's like the stuff which I originally started off with listening to, apart from like The Who and Small Face, like a lot of the mod stuff. Yeah. Um, I still love all that, but like Meat Loaf and Queen and some of that... I, I can't stand to listen to <laughs> just and I don't know why but every once in a while a Queen track will come on I'll go that's actually a decent tune hmm. but I some of them you just have to say that's yeah. a good tune yeah <laughs> but I couldn't sit and put an album on alright okay you know so many good Queen songs but, I know yeah. I know I have to agree but yeah. like that Live 8 performance yeah that was like that was the first time I saw them and I was like no I didn't see it at the time but I would yeah, see it later going wow Unreal. If you just took that, you'd think that was taken from the headline show yeah. and it's just them and nobody exactly, else. Yeah. But little yeah. did you know they were sandwiched 25 minutes yeah. between loads of other big yeah. bands that no one else got a reaction. I like think I've got about three or four live DVDs of them and yeah. every yeah. one of them is just like, it would have <laughs> been like, great to see that lineup, wouldn't it? It's, oh, God. It's, yeah. Just and <laughs> I haven't been to see the current lineup or when they did it with Paul no, Rogers. But it's getting some good reviews, though. Yeah, yeah. Some really good He's reviews. absolutely he's, nailing that. Great voice, isn't he? Yeah, he has. Really There's not many people voice. who could even have attempt, attempt to do yeah, that. Exactly, He's yeah. like, don't yeah. bother. Yeah. <laughs> and he got a lot of shit as well just for when he got announced. Yeah, exactly, yeah. It was just people writing, yeah. him, off, writing him off. But he's been yeah. doing it so long now. He's just, he's grown he, into it. He's yeah. just 
And the thing is, he always says, I'm not pretending to be or trying to be. No. I'm and just it, me and singing. That's right. And that, that's the way you've got to approach something to like that. Put his own it's, spin on it, yeah. but still like being true to the songs, yeah. I think. So what? who's who's your, your obviously, apart from Motley Crue? All sorts, really. I got, I've, my music taste is... So it's like Motley Crue and then just a sea of bands. Yeah, but not even just <laughs> bands. Like, <laughs> I've been to see all sorts. I've seen Katy Perry, Rihanna, yeah. Beyonce, Endo. What about like when you first like, started playing music? Was it, what bands were sort of influencing you then? Uh, the first band I ever got into was the Beatles. Okay. Um, and it was strange because my dad had like this book of like song lyrics, and it, the one that was in there of the Beatles was "Fool on a Hill." I'd never heard the song, but right. I knew all the words to it, and I, I always <laughs> wanted to hear this song. Yeah. And so the bought us a. Um, a CD with it on. I think it was Magical Mystery Tour, maybe. Right. <laughs> Don't call you on that. Yeah, I say. <laughs> but I heard it, and as soon as I heard it, I knew yeah. how how it sounded, and I kind of already had that idea in my head of how this song sounded, but I didn't know what it actually yeah. sounded like, so it was, yeah. it was quite quite interesting. And So then it was kind of like I got that album, and then another album, and then another album. Yeah. And then yeah. I've... But I just love the Beatles. Like, what was the first gigs that you went to? You remember? Steps. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that is eclectic. Second one, Velvet Revolver. Wow. So a bit of a difference. But well, that was been a cool gig. Yeah. Velvet Revolver. Where, Where was that it? at? Newcastle Arena. Yeah. I think mine was. Is it nine one one? Yeah. <laughs> I went and seen them at Carlo when I was a kid. You guys. With you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. We've got, we've got deep personalities. Like, <laughs> people just don't understand. No, I want one. Yeah, when I, when I, because there was a guy from Carlisle, wasn't there? Yeah, Lee Brennan. <laughs> he knows his stuff. No, <laughs> the, the only reason I know that was he was in the pantomime at Carlisle. I went because John Gash plays drums. He had that fact in the holster, ready yeah. to go. Then yeah. he. Yeah. <laughs> but then, <laughs> then same again. It was Velvet Revolver, didn't we? Yeah. we went, went on well, the bus. Yeah. Did you do anything separately? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, sometimes. <laughs> Velvet Revolver, though. That was that must have been cool. Yeah, there was awesome. them and the Datsuns, wasn't it? Oh, the Datsuns, yeah. wow. As, yeah. as a fast the past. So that was like 2005, four, yeah. yeah, 2005. Yeah. yeah. Back in the day, because they were, they were here and then gone, weren't they? I just watched that documentary the other week, actually. I think the it's MTV called, one, trying yeah, to find the a singer. Rise of, for, uh, the rise of Velvet Revolver, <laughs> trying to find two years, trying to find a singer. And they finally yeah. did, Crazy, but... Yeah. He was a great performer as well, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. It was a tortured soul, but mm. yeah. it is what it is. It was short, like things like that. It's like a controlled explosion. It's only going to last a certain amount of time, yeah. so I just enjoy yeah. it while it's here. Well, and it's gone. We saw him, him play with um, Stone Temple Pilots yeah. download as well. Oh, really? So that was that was pretty cool. But then um, I was in Vegas one time, and I met this guy, and he was just like, I'm going to interview Stone Temple Pilots. And it was when uh, Chester Bennington was singing for them. Oh, right. And that was possibly one of my favourite gigs ever. It was right. so good. Because like, they were like one of his favourite bands, weren't yeah, they? Exactly, so yeah, exactly. And that jumped like, the chance. I got, I got talked to him outside where they were getting interviewed, and he was just like, he's like, it's really weird for me. He said, because it's like, he's my favourite performer. He said, but I kind of want to do the gig, but I'd rather be there watching him yeah. do it. Yeah. And he said, it was a really like tough decision to actually do it because he. Mm, he was in a position bad. where it's his favourite band and he he wants to see his favourite singer singing those songs, but he's there doing that, <laughs> that job. And it, and it must have been a, a weird situation to, yeah, to be surreal. in to do that. Yeah, But it'd be quite cool if it happened. Yeah. I think there's certain bands now, all, a lot of the bigger bands, older bands are coming to an end now. Yeah. There's not that many of them left. Yeah. Like ACDC, you don't. Someone said that they might do another one with Axel, but how, apparently they're recording new material. Uh, I'm not sure. I've so heard. I, I, so I've heard. I, 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 you know, like ACDC, yeah, they do. Oh no, I do. <laughs> I do. I do. Well, I, went, I went to see them on that tour with Axel, and I thought it was awesome. Yeah, everyone said that was, was great. But a lot of people said that's when they should have stopped. Yeah. Because they've got to do that final one. Yeah. yeah. They found a. Nobody else could have done it. I don't think. No. No. Nobody else could have pulled it off. So the thing is, everybody slags off Axel, but at the end of the day, it's. He's one of the greats. Yeah, he's. He you is. Know, he his is. vocal range is unbelievable. It is, and, and he's actually come back, hasn't he? And he's it's actually strong. got back yeah, to where, yeah. Yeah. where he was. Because the Chinese was. democracy era was terrible live. Him singing was shocking. Yeah, I saw the Mark II in the early two thousands when he had his 
dreadlocks with oh, the, yeah. the first yeah. time the second version of yeah. they had come out and they were I said I saw them twice in the space of like two months and they were just awful yeah. <laughs> there was points where if you weren't like looking sound wise it was pretty good but yeah. other parts you're like what is he doing What's he, should going just, on? he should have just yeah. stopped now because it, it just was like he was half assing it yeah. like the, even, mm. even then yeah by the way that was my foot <laughs> Was it? What <laughs> <laughs> was it doing? I was like, what was that? I went last year. I'll, I'll, I'll move on from yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for that. I, I did go and see Gina last last year in London. And the arena? It went to the stadium? Yeah. And they were, they were unbelievable. Yeah. Everyone said they were just... And the best bit was, I, I was having a conversation on Facebook uh, last night because somebody went, oh, I hope they don't play Coma to download. And I was just like, I would rather have Coma than what I would November in. Right. Because they played Coma at London and it was unbelievable. Mm. I mean, it's 10 minutes of just pure <laughs> all over the place. Yeah. But it was bang on. It's kind of like organised chaos, that song, isn't it? Yeah. But you could see the people that were there for the greatest hits and the people who... Cause with the chavs. They were like a die hard, yeah. compared yeah. to the diehard yeah. fans. because, yeah. I mean, I went and sat at the side and, you know, watching them and uh, they started doing spaghetti incident stuff so Duff yeah. was singing yeah and I was sat there and I'm sort of tapping it my girlfriend and I'm going the, pl- the plane you know <laughs> and she's like what are you going on about <laughs> spaghetti incident stuff it's spaghetti inc-. and you could see everybody going to the toilets like people leaving in droves to, wow. to go and I because it wasn't a great estate because yeah. it wasn't a great estate and then when Slash starts doing his 20 minute guitar solo and you know he's going into Sweet Child of Mine I just went, right, I'm going to the toilet, I'm, go- I'm going to yeah, the bar. Exactly. Because exactly. I've, go- I've heard Axel sing it. You've heard the song a million yeah. times. I've heard the song a million times. I've seen Slash play it. Yeah. You well, know, it's yeah. overplayed. Over- <laughs> as I like to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's just like, well, you know, I'm not bothered about that. So is Duff like one of your sort of bass yeah. player idols? Yeah. Who else? John Entwistle's God. You know, I don't think there's any bass player better. <laughs> Better than John Entwistle. He he basically wrote how to play rock bass. What about Lemmy? Yeah, I, I don't I don't mind Lemmy. But he's not up there with one of you. I, 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 for me, I wouldn't class him as an outstanding bass player. He was great at what he'd done. He's more of a character, isn't he? Mm. Yeah, he, he was great at what he'd done. But he, you know, he didn't do anything other than turn his amps up to... De- yeah, I saw that. Yeah, it was too loud. Definitely. You know, mm. too, too loud to the point where you can't. I couldn't enjoy it. Yeah. Other than that, even with ear protection, in. it wasn't playing bass. You know, yeah. Really. There's was not it, a noise. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And you know, people will probably hate me for that. It's your I opinion. Mean, You're entitled yeah. to your opinion. You exactly. know, I mean, I I do like Motorhead, and I, I yeah. You know, I love the music, but as a bass player, he's not a standout for me. Yeah, that's fair enough. But yeah, I think. Same the sixties and seventies guys, you know, you Jack Bruce and you, as I say, you John Entwistle and that. So did, do you they, play guitar as well? Yeah, yeah. But did you always? How, how have you ended up being a bass player? Did you always, did you want to be a guitar player initially? And I started off on guitar. Too many, too too, too many, many strings. I was gonna say too too many strings for you. You can only count to four. <laughs> <laughs> Says a drummer. <laughs> he only needs to count to yeah, four. Exactly. <laughs> but um. No, it was just one of them where we were at school and, you know, like, they had school bands, so there was, like, the school blues band and school Kaylee band and everything like that. And they didn't have a bass player. Right. And the music teacher just went, who wants to play bass? And There's always a million guitar players. Yeah, there? yeah. No Everyone wants player. to play guitar. And I was just yeah. like, oh, I'll have a go. And <laughs> that was basically it. And yeah. never really looked back. I've been a bass player for... Still sit and play guitar, but... Yeah, you've got guitars as well. yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I sit and that's that, all right. I, I write everything on on. Do guitars. you write most of the music in Heartbreak Remedy then? Mm. Pretty much. Pretty Did much. most of it come up on guitar? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but Luke writes a lot more lyrics than what I do. All right. Which is the strangest thing. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. Luke, Luke, as a as a lyricist, is one of the craziest people I know. Yeah. Because <laughs> he, he gets an A4 sheet of paper and he'll fill every line. <laughs> right. Won't really have a chorus, won't really have a verse or anything. He just writes and writes and writes. And then he gives me the piece of paper and goes, what do can we do can. with this? <laughs> and I literally, and I'm sat there just picking through what he's got. Right. 
And so is he writing those words to the like basically the song is pretty much written. No, he no. He the, just the words just, come first. Just, yeah. He just, just he just writes lyrics. Does he have a title before he starts, or does he just? No, just God knows. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> but he's so creative. Yeah. Like, it's unreal. There's always yeah. something worth picking out. Then obviously. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so is that that's what with this then? Kind of. It was just a doodle, wasn't it? it yeah. Was that's a, that's. Uh, with that record, it's been a mix of mine. Do you write some of the lyrics as well? Or do you yeah. have ideas already for some? Yeah, see, with, with Luke, Luke writes a lot. Whereas I'll sit and I won't take the song to the band unless I know it's pretty much there. Yeah. Do you prefer you write your l- lyrics to a song that's pretty much done? Yeah. Yeah. See, I, I'll, I'll sit and I'll work everything out. Yeah. And then I'll go in and I'll go, right, this is what I've got in mind. If it doesn't quite work, then we go around it a few times and we see yeah. whether we can work it out. There's a couple of tracks on there that took us forever to to sort of mm. get the feel for it. Mm. It was like I could play it on acoustic and it'd sound great, but it is a band and there was something missing. Right. And we'll go, right, we'll try it this way, we'll try that, and we'll put a fill there and how's about if we try this or try it. And it was just, this record we've worked a lot more Instead of just going, yeah, that'll be fine. Yeah, put a bit more thought into we've, it. We've thought about it. Yeah. Whereas there's, there's some tracks, I mean, uh, back to you on there, that was done in pretty much half an hour mm. in rehearsals. Right. I, I walked in, wrote down the chords for Luke, and I just went, that's it. I mean, me and Luke will send song ideas to each other on, you know, just messages and stuff, and he'll go, oh, I've got this riff, what do you think of this? Um can we tie it in with this? Is there any way we can put that riff with this music? And I'm more of, I'll do the chord progressions. So you'll write a riff or odd little fills, but he doesn't really do the chord progression bits to right. sing over the top of. So he just writes the parts and I'll fill in right. whatever there is. Same with, as I say, same with lyrics. Um, it's like you give us, while he was away, we sat acoustically again. While he was away again. While he was away <laughs> again. A lot of things happen while you're away. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but we just sit with acoustics and I think we come up with about eight or nine ideas for the next lot. Yeah. And he's going, right, I've got these lyrics and I'll pass, pass over a wad of paper. And he'll go... It's like homework for you. <laughs> yeah. And, it, and, it, and, it, and he will, he'll go, I'll oh, just pick through and... See what you like. I think, I think I've got a song at the minute which I'm trying to finish off. And I'll, all I've done is I've just picked through ears and filled in with my own lyrics oh, yeah, that yeah. I've started with. Yeah. And I've just started putting them. I mean, he, gi- he gives us a... I've done a piece of music for him. And he gives us a, a set of lyrics. And I had to sit down with him because I went, your lyrics are too close to ones which I've already got for a song which I've bring into uh, the right, band. Yeah. Yeah. And it was pretty much nearly line for line. <laughs> it, it was it wasn't that far away, but he has a lot more content than what I do. Right. Because as I say, he'll fill he just ev- like he just blew yeah, yeah, he yeah. fills every line, and yeah. then he'll maybe put the odd squiggle going. I think this could be chorus. Right. Yeah. And all that sort of stuff, and I'll go all right. But it's that close to what I've already got. I went. I don't know if I can use your lyrics, and I feel <laughs> I feel bad because he's sat and done all these lyrics, and you know I'll go. I don't know if I can use them because I've already got a song with that you know, that sort of story in it. Yeah. And he just goes, oh, it's all right. Just send us the music again and I'll write yeah. somewhere else. <laughs> and that's just the way he is with us. He's just yeah. like, oh, I've got this, I've got... And he's just so yeah. carefree. Other than when he's playing, mm-hmm. I've never known a guy beat his cell up as much as what he does. If he makes a mistake or something. Oh, he's, he's terrible for it. He'll, he'll come off stage and he'll just go, I'm sorry. It's like what you're sorry this, for. Fuck this. Oh, well, I, 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 I messed this bend up yeah. in the, in the third song on on this bit, and I'll go. Did you? What? <laughs> you know. End of the day, did anyone out there notice? No. That's yeah, what you exactly. said. Have they all had a good time? Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, that's it. Yeah. Like I but, say, like even the big bands, they do it every show. Yeah. They make fuck ups here and there. Miss a note. It's just human nature, whatever. isn't it? It's, it's like just, it's just it's like just what if ducks back? It should be. Yeah. But he is. He's yeah. very. He's like a perfect perfectionist. Yeah. Yeah. He's very hard on himself. Yeah. No, but it's it's sort of what made him into what it, um, mm-hmm. he sort of sat 
back when Callum was in the band, he just sort of let Callum get on with all the solos. He, he took right, yeah. a couple. But then when Callum said that he was leaving, I think Callum went to the toilet after he told us that he was leaving. And Luke just went, I'm taking the solos. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I was going to do that. And we're, we're just <laughs> 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 Shit. And I was just sort of sat there. And I mean, even Luke will probably say himself, at the time, he wasn't the greatest of guitar players. Mm. You know, he, he was a, he was a rhythm player and he could play a little bit of lead. Yeah, he's had to come into his own now, hasn't but he? But he turned around, and he went, "I want the solos," and I went, yeah. "If you can do it, you can have them. You can yeah. have whatever you want. If you can pull it off, yeah." Go well, he do it. is the guitar in that band, yeah. your band now. Yeah. yeah, it's all down to him. And so, but he was really determined as well. Yeah. And he, and once he gets an idea in his head, he's like, "I'm yeah. doing it." Yeah. Mm. But he has is for for this band, I think. He he's the guy that's improved out of all of us. He's the one that's pushed the most. Right. Yeah. I suppose the situation has forced him to, yeah, hasn't yeah. it? Yeah. But he's turned into such a good guitar player. It's yeah. like you sit back every once in a while and you may be writing a riff, like you'll maybe know yourself. I'll I'll be writing a riff and I'll go, I wonder how this will work, I wonder how he'll he'll go about this. And I'll show him a couple of times and he'll go, Oh yeah, yeah. But then he'll change what I've done. I mean, I've only just worked out that he's changed the riff to, to Kittle Butterfly on the record. <laughs> and I didn't even realise up until he started playing in rehearsals the other day and I went, he's messed with my riff. <laughs> Shows how much attention he's been paying, isn't it? You know year. what I mean? It's, yeah. just, it's just one of them where he sort of changes. But, I mean, as I say, with Luke, he's put his head down and... Mm. He's got on with it. Totally yeah. different guitar player to... He's had to take a lot more responsibility as far as the band, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah. So when you're songwriting, do you normally come into it when the songs get in there? Yeah, like I'll come in. Yeah, so you have to. I'll come in and just be like, "This is what we're playing." Them two will kind of like work it out, the two of them, and then I'll just kind of jam around and see what seems to fit, sort of thing, and just sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. (laughs) Change it up the next couple of times and just kind of play with a few different fills and yeah. everything like that. And yeah. What kit do you use? Got a Natal kit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I just realised that. I thought it was metal. <laughs> it Natal. Yeah. That's cool. So I got that maybe two years back. Right. I used to have a Yamaha stage custom before then. Then I got Natal. And it's a nice kit. <laughs> sounds, sounds good. good. Yeah, it sounds good. Looks on that. good. That's what we used on the recording. Yeah. 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 Sounds really good. Yeah. I'd say the drums... Was well, the first thing I noticed was how yeah. good the drums sound. We had we had the offer to use the studio kit, and I was just, right. I just said I prefer to use my own. Yeah. Um, but no, I, I love the way it sounds. It's how many it what, the, what, how many drum takes were you doing for the tracks? Did it take you? I don't know. To be honest, maybe took a couple with the with the clicks. Yeah. And it's then once we realised that we didn't like the clicks, yeah. um, I'm saying. Averaging about four. Yeah, I was going to say four. That's not bad. Roughly. Good. Yeah. So um, do you have to do in like guitar and bass, like do a few takes and... Well, we were all we were all in separate rooms, but you can see each other. Yeah, yeah. And all we've done was put the scratch in. What we put down as a scratch was his... For his master track, yeah. yeah. His master yeah. track. Yeah. Um, but yeah, about four takes and we got that down. I th- uh, that helped max. us, I think, on day one going through all the songs, playing it all together, yeah. to a click, not to a click. And there was a couple of them in the last one where we adjusted the tempo, because even Matt was going, this is too slow, or yeah. this is too fast. So And that was that the thing, helped. it was trying to find... Because well, we needed somebody else, yeah. his opinion, who does that all the time, to say, yeah. that's too fast, or that's too slow. Or he, had other, he had some other ideas as well. It's like, yeah, that's kind of... Yeah, yeah see, <laughs> we, we rehearse, before we go in the studio, we normally rehearse without lyrics. So I won't have a vocal mic and we just do it musically right and we'll have luke doing just the rhythm parts so it's all just rhythm guitar and bass and and just do the rhythm section of the music then we'll go back through it so he puts all the solos the licks and everything in yeah and then we'll go through it again with the vocals so that we can do each part of the studio sort of as quick as you can yeah because you need to you know, know yeah. you, mm-hmm you need to save on time and money you go in and you execute it yeah. Yeah. to perfection yeah. and yeah. that was one thing that Tom said to us he went you know you got to know your songs inside now back yeah. to front yeah you, you've came in and you know what you're doing we've do, we done pretty much got 
all the rhythm stuff and some of the lead done in two days. Yeah, I mean, you can only do that yeah. if you know the stuff, don't yeah. you? And the, I mean, the extra day was to go back. Oh, uh, we, we call that extra day a fiddle day. Yeah. Sitting fiddle yeah. with stuff. Well, that was that was just to go back for Luke because okay. Luke wasn't happy with guitars. Yeah, yeah. Took, right. a, took a CD away and listened to it. And yeah. he was like, oh, you need time to do that, though. You need time to do that. And that's what we did most of the time. You want to be 100% yeah. happy with it yeah. when you've got the finished product. So. Yeah. Because yeah. we spent quite a lot in. Like, after we recorded, like, going back and kind of like tweaking a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And then we just went up and messaged Tom and he was like, oh, come up for a couple of hours and we'd go That's through a few things. That's handy that he got luxury doing that. And then he said, he's like, he's happy. And then we'd listen and I'd go, hmm, I think there's a, a click or something there. So yeah. there was a couple of times when I noticed like little sounds and went back and found where it was and there was a couple of times we had to redo a line on Matty's vocal because it was some click somewhere right and we tried taking it out but it didn't quite work and it was quite cool like piecing things back yeah, together and yeah but do you ever argue over songs no, someone's adamant no. that this i think it should be this and i know i think it should be this no i pretty no. much get my own way every <laughs> time don't i yeah, it's easier um, <laughs> no it's it's just you sort of work things out i mean there's there's times where you know, we've all been wrong in the songwriting process. Yeah. I think. Yeah, and then when it's done afterwards, you go, ah, "You were right. Yeah. I'm glad we did yeah. it that way." And, well, you know, and you sort of sat there, and you, <laughs> just, and you sat there, and you go, "Whatever." <laughs> you know, but we, we always used to find that uh, Matt, our producer, he was the great. He was the great one. At, he, he used to settle arguments without even knowing that yeah. he settled an argument because he'd say something. He goes, nah, "That's in the wrong key," or. It needs to be two dB slower, and it, that's sly look. Yeah. Someone's just won their argument. Yeah, I told you. <laughs> I told you. And we always used to go with whatever he said because yeah. somebody had that opinion yeah, anyway. Yeah, so. if he knows. Yeah. But no, we, we we sort of rehearsed, especially for this record, because I mean, some of the songs are from when Callum was still in the band. Yeah, so we had to adapt them, adapt them a bit. A little bit, um, but I think there's maybe only one, mm-hmm. one or two at the most. But all the rest, it, it was, like we said, you're sitting there and you're working it out. And, so, you know, maybe still go, I don't quite know this. How can we get this bit into there? Yeah. Or me and Luke will be going, it's not working. You know. Just didn't sound right, some of it. It's yeah. And I it's think like, one of the hardest things is working how a verse goes to a chorus, like coming up with bridges yeah, and yeah. pre-chorus and stuff like that. I think that's hard. Because this, this is an awesome riff and this is an awesome chorus, but how do we... You can't just chop yeah. and go straight into Bang. that. Yeah. That was one of those hardest things for me to come up with things like, mm. like that. So the hardest thing for us is, because we're a three-piece, is whether to double up the riff. So whether I join in with Luke. Live then, or on the recording, you mean? Well, both. Oh, both, yeah. Because you don't quite know, especially live, you can sometimes lose the... The thickness. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because you're doubling up. Especially, like... When he's doing a solo, there's no rhythm guitar, yeah. I suppose. So the bass yeah. needs to be as thick as possible, yeah. I suppose. See, I play a lot of chords on the on yeah, the bass. thicken out a bit. Yeah, yeah and distortion idea. pedals and yeah, you know. I mean, nine times out of ten, my guitar, my bass sounds more like a guitar. Yeah, yeah. You know, because it's got that low end, but at the same time, I've got enough distortion on it to create a guitar tone. Yeah. At the same time, so if the sound guy's got it panned and everything right. Thickens it, it out. It thickens it right yeah. out. And Luke, Luke's guitar tone is second to none, you know. I remember, well, that, I was going to say that first time when I didn't know that Callum had left yeah. and I heard you, I thought, that's good that I didn't notice because the yeah. sound was really good. And I was yeah. like, oh. Because at first I thought, has he just left the stage? Or yeah. has he... <laughs> yeah. But it was, it was thick, it was good. Plus, I mean, the sound in Trillions is good yeah, as well. Yeah, I was so. going to say, that, that's partly the sound, isn't it? It's still, it still sounded great, yeah. so... Yeah. 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 Luke doesn't know how he gets his tone. He yeah. just gets it. He doesn't just, know. just happens. <laughs> That's one thing I will say. Yeah. So if he gets asked in an interview, you'll be like, "How do you get your sound?" He'll barely so be able to tell you what I'm using. <laughs> so he's not a technical guy, no, is he not? No, not at all. <laughs> no, he's, he's one of them where he just likes to plug in and play. So did you not have to do a bit of twiddling with that to get the right sound in the studio, though? Ah, that was me. <laughs> all right, okay. Yeah. <laughs> You're like his guitar tech. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. You know, we'd sit, we'd sit, I mean, there's still odd bits and bobs where we talk about even on, on the record and stuff, where we're going, you know, maybe we should have just tweaked it like this, tweaked it like that. 
a loop will go, yeah, see, I thought I should have had this. And I'm like, why didn't you say it? Yeah. <laughs> that was one of my favourite things in the studio, twiddling different amps and, oh, was a Mr. Boogie there, yeah. or was a Marshall, or what, what should we try? And it's yeah. just like... <laughs> but the thing is, the, the black star that he uses is fantastic. Mm. Apart mm. from being extremely heavy. Yeah, that's his, that's his downfall. As in weight it? heavy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> but the tone that he can get out of it yeah. is mm. fantastic. Yeah, is it yeah. a valve one? Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, Summit 100. I can't remember what it's called now. That's but a good. Uh, yeah, it's a good sound. He has a good sound. He needs it. Yeah, yeah. it all kind of gel together to make a. Yeah. It does to make it not sound like a three piece. And that that's kind of what we spent the first year of being a three piece doing, Getting trying to, to yeah. trying to build that sound yeah. and get yeah. it back to somewhere where it was sort of thing. And, yeah. as, and as I said before, that's where we got the we just write new music. Yeah, and we can write it for us. So uh, this so is the, basically this is. A, perfect representation of the band now pretty yeah. much yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah i mean i still think we're a live band yeah well that's it it's trying to capture what you do yeah. live on a recording isn't it which yeah. is not easy yeah. but and when especially when you're you doing it three or four times playing the same track and it's you kind of want to put everything into it but when you you're on your fourth tr song on the album yeah and you you're on your fourth take of this next song yeah. and it's like you still want to keep that energy up it's hard. And you've got to take that five minutes and just kind yeah. of chill out for a little bit. And yeah, the five minute break can be quite get back important. Into the, yeah, yeah, definitely. What was it like yeah. for vocals? Was it? We sort of split it between me and Luke. So Luke would go in and do a couple of songs solo wise. And then right. I'll go in and do a Was few. he doing like backing tracks and stuff or? No, it was, it was more like. He doubled them up. Uh, yeah, like a lot of his solos and everything like that. He done. A few of them, and then I'll go in and do a few vocal. Oh, I see. Bits. Right. So you weren't doing them all. You didn't have to do them all in one yeah. go. Right. So I would do maybe three or four songs, and then I would have a rest, and he would do his solos, and then I'll ah, go back right. in and do some vocals, and normally just switch it around. And yeah, I wish I wish we could have done that. It was always vocals were last. Yeah. So today's vocals, it's like yeah, yeah. I do vocals all day. Joy. It's like, yeah. uh, but what's the most amount of gigs you've ever done in a row? Well, I did, on that tour last year, I did 17. In, in a row? row. Well, we had, we did, I think it was three, and we had a day off. Um, And then I had 13, and then the one at Wildfire. Oh, right, In yeah. a row. Yeah. And that was, that was tough. Yeah, but, but it was. <laughs> but what about you for vocals? I think uh, the last Vegas tour, which mm -hmm. is, what, a week and a half? Yeah. That was vocally. By the time I got fifth show in, my throat was I say, does it pretty much gone. But you need like three or four then a day off. Yeah, but yeah. we didn't have that. But yeah. sometimes you don't have the luxury, of that, do you? You just got to go for it. To be honest, I didn't look after it. Yeah. Like things like not talking too much during yeah. the day, drinking yeah. plenty of water. Here's a problem. Sleep. <laughs> te I'm terrible for it. I don't know if you know how important sleep is. Yeah. Oh but God. I used to. I used to take the mick out of Rosie. Yeah. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> With his tea. I, and oh, yeah. we. Everything that he used Honey. to do to, to keep his throat right for the tours. Yeah. And I used to take the mix arm and I used to be on the drink and going out with every... You know, if there was somewhere to go... When you weren't the singer. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would think, and I used to take the mick out of him. Yeah. And then it was only when I got halfway through the Las Vegas tour and I just went... God speak. And now I understand why he did what he did. And since then... Yeah. You know... You've I've got to look after him, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. and same with, like... I used to drink... You know, a few a few pints before I'll go on stage or while I was on, and now it's like, oh, maybe I've won before I go on. Yeah. Just, just especially sort of, if you're playing any longer than half an hour. Yeah, yeah. just to loosen up. But it, it's more of I'm I'm learning. Yeah, the hard know. way. <laughs> yeah, it it really is the hard way. I, I yeah. think vocally that that was the hardest thing I've had to do. Mm. I think if you take it seriously and you give a shit about what you're doing. If you think about people paying to come and see yeah. you play, then you've got to, you've got to do stuff yeah. like that. Cause yeah. You're yeah. putting on a show, so that we got exactly, yeah. they want to be entertained. And if your voice yeah. goes halfway through, it's it's frustrating for yourself and for them. I think I think what sort of kicked in for me was somebody come up and went, "Tell you dad a pint tonight, mate," and I just went, mm. "Shit!" A bit like you a know. punch in the stomach, yeah. Right, isn't it? Yeah, and I was just like, "Right, I need to sort myself out yeah. a bit here," you know. Yeah. Um, so I mean, a lot of the time now, I I like to, I normally drive as quite a bit now. Me and you share yeah. driving, but I like to drive now because it means that you know I, 
I can't drink. Yeah. And it helps a bit more because yeah. you're just like, well, I can't have a drink because. Yeah. Problem we always had was like when we had the van, mm. it's just a laugh a minute all day. And like the van's quite loud, so you've got to shout to tell yeah, you yeah. something. Yeah. Like, I need to stop yeah. talking during the day because by the time yeah. we get there, I'm like, yeah. start to feel I can feel my throat already. already. Yeah. It's yeah. just from having a laugh. <laughs> yeah. I think the more shows I've done, though, not singing is six in three days. Right. And that was playing a blues festival down in Colne. <laughs> and I, f- I finished off mm. Will We Do All the last last gig I, I played with my blues band for five shows and then we got to the last last show and these lads come down and it was two and a half hours solid and I was on the floor it was mad hot wasn't I I was on the floor yeah. and you could see through my shirt because <laughs> I, w- I was sweating that much yeah. and it was just a puddle <laughs> where my mic was because yeah. it was just that much sweat dripping off I was absolutely knackered yeah. <laughs> and all I wanted was a McDonald's. <laughs> On the floor dreaming of a McDonald's. Yeah, Mac that, that was all I wanted. Or not a KFC because I haven't got any chicken. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have you heard that the Cadbury's have given DHL the, like, oh, the, the same, contract? The same contract, yeah. yeah. Now they don't know whether to deliver the chicken or the eggs first. <laughs> I knew it was coming. Home time. <laughs> there was someone on the on the news that like it was that serious. They interviewed a woman in Birmingham. She went, "Yeah, I had to go to McDonald's instead." Like it was. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> oh well, lads. Thanks for joining us. It's been awesome to talk to you. No yeah. been good to see you. Want to do it for a while? Yep. Um, if people want to find you on social media, do you know what your addresses are? You can go www.heartbreakremedy.com. Oh, you've got the address. Good. Or Facebook forward slash Heartbreak Remedy. Or YouTube forward slash Heartbreak Remedy. Nice. Instagram forward he's slash. Right, he's right, text it down. <laughs> Instagram forward slash Heartbreak Remedy. Twitter, Heartbreak R M D Y. Because it's too short. Two- <laughs> yeah. yeah. Bastards. Exactly, exactly. And then to buy the CD, because you need to buy the yeah. CD. Buy the CD. That's what you need to do. You need to buy the CD. Tech. Yeah. That's www. Dot heartbreakremedy.bigcartel.com Say that address again. It's www.heartbreakremedy.bigcartel.com You could work for the BBC. I could, couldn't I? No. <laughs> Bye thought, now. The audio listeners, you'll have to check that on YouTube, but the artwork's pretty damn cool. Bye now. Pay the same day. It's out now. So. Oh, well, cheers, lads. Thanks for joining us. Perfect. It's been fun. Thank Wonderful. you very much.